What's up, everybody? It's the BK BK podcast where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. Woo. I'm your host, Brandon Phillips, and I'm joined by my co hosts, Brian Taylor, you. Kerry Taylor, and Yo. Captain Kyle McKenna. All right, guys. So for today's episode, it's all about the NFL draft. You know it. 2021 NFL draft, okay? And the BK BK mock draft. That is all righty because we're going to do our first mock draft and only mock draft of the season. And uh, after this, our next show will be in regards to the actual draft and analyzing the uh, New York Jets and what they actually did. So uh, we here at the BKBK uh, podcast, we're putting our football minds together to give you fellow Jets fans a look at what we feel is the best direction the New York Jets should go when drafting players for the 2021 draft. That's right. Let's go. Let's do it, right? So now here's the thing. You all know that we don't always agree or have the same football philosophy. What? So that is why. Never. <laughs> I thought we always agreed. <laughs> you know, hey, that's what makes this show entertaining, right? This is what keeps people, you know, like, hey, you know, they chime in. They have all these questions and comments. You know sure, what I'm saying? Sure. I prefer the questions than the comments. Don't get slick, all right? No. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> But um, listen, that's why we're going to make this draft a pure democratic one. We'll have our argumentation and debate sessions when it comes to certain draft positions and players, et cetera. But ultimately, it's majority rule when it comes to the pick. I have a feeling that each one of us at certain points during the show will have strong dissenting opinions. Wah, but, wah. You know <laughs> but hey, you know what I'm saying? That's what makes it great. All righty. So I have a timer. We're going to spend 10 minutes on each pick just so that we don't just lie at rest here, you know, just to kind of expedite things. I'm going to click on my timer approximately. Wait, 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 wait for Kyle to pull up. You know what I mean? Okay. So, Kyle, right, so for everybody who's everybody who's unfamiliar, this is. Was this the second or the third time we've done it with the PFN mock? Second, I think. Second. Second. Yeah, not the not the first time that we've done a mock draft, but we've been using this PFN um, Pro Football Network mock draft simulator. Um, if you want to check it out, um, I would say that I'm averaging five mocks a day. How about you guys? <laughs> it, yeah. it varies. Yeah, right. it varies. You know, depending on work schedule and everything. You know, so. I, I put in 10 a couple times, but sometimes I've only done like two or three. But, wow. you know, I, so, I, I think that we are highly versed in the yes. art of mock drafting. All four of us. I can guarantee that. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that are playing along at home, um, you go to this PFN, um, this PFN Pro Football Network simulator. You set the amount of rounds you want, the speed that you want, and the team you want to draft for. So we've selected the Jets. And – you click let's draft. We are doing no trades in this draft. So we are now on the clock. Um, Trevor Lawrence has been selected by the Jacksonville Jaguars with the first pick. Um, if you look over here on the side, they got about, um, about 10 visible of the, uh, the picks we can make here. Um, you want to go? Are we going to our cards now or not yet? Because I haven't hit the timer yet. Because you were basically explaining to our lovely audience the functionality of what we're doing. Also, if you looked at it, we picked six rounds, and that's because the Jets don't pick past six rounds. All 10 of our picks are within the one to six round uh, um, uh, categories there. So that's why we have that. And we're going to go at normal speed instead of that uh, electric, super fast paced speed, just so that we can kind of stay within our means here and understand uh, what's going on as well as you guys, the audience understanding what's going on. So wait, 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 that, one last, one last thing be so and we're not going to do any trades. Yeah. Right? So, he's oh, he said, yeah. okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah. I'm not listening. Yeah, we're not going to do any stuff. trades. It's going to be standard um, just to be less confusing and not to take up as much time because trades take, take up time. Sure. But I Listen, think that everyone will get our point um, of, of where our respective heads are without doing any trades all righty so that's fine all this right will give, this will give you a little right bit of everybody a, good on the team yeah all right so give you a little bit of a look too into the san francisco 49ers trading up and what that's done to our trade prospects in this spot before they did that trade 
you would have four or five trade offers on this mock simulator and you consistently have zero now yeah, because people true. think they know who we're picking. Yeah. They, 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 they think we're locked in, but let's see if team BK BK is locked in and the timer starts now. All right. Spending 10 minutes. All right, Kyle, make, make sure you un unshare, unshare your, uh, the simulator. Okay. There you go. All right. All right. I mean, I, I know who it is. I know. I, I, I think I know we all know is. who it is. <laughs> right. But we just want, we just may not agree on who we want it to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, well, yeah. Kerry wanted the Frenchman. I, uh, I'm not doing it this time. <laughs> he wanted the Frenchman. Kerry wanted the Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, merci, bon bon, oui, oui, all that good stuff. <laughs> all that good stuff. Right. <laughs> all right. So okay, guys. let's get this out of the way. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get this way. out of the way. This shouldn't, this shouldn't uh, take Brandon, 10 minutes right here. It really right. should. No, it won't take let's 10 get minutes this out of the way. Right. Brandon. Go ahead. What's up? Brandon has loved Zach Wilson longer and truer yes. than and, anyone and else. He, he said his name oh, first. And he, harder. In, in, the fur, in the whole world. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. When Cupid's arrow came by. It struck Brandon first, right? And um, I just want to—I want to say it before he does. Yes. So that the when he does it later on with other picks, it won't—it won't be the second time. Okay. First of all, you know, uh, Eros, uh, uh, the Greek god of love, he's got a lot of arrows for me today. I've fallen in love <laughs> with a number of with a number of players. But yes, Zach Wilson, as you can see here, hopefully he's not too reflective. You know what I'm saying? Is um, my Number one pick uh, for the New York Jets. It's pick number two in the draft. Zach Wilson, quarterback out of BYU. I saw him. I recognized him at the end of uh, um, November, and I watched his game tape, and I just thought the kid was re ridiculous. He has a certain je ne sais quoi. That's French for I don't know what. I'm sure Kerry likes that because he loves the Frenchman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my God! You know? is, is, uh, is, is this first pick going to be about Kerry? Let's do it. <laughs> it is. I Let's think. go. You Let's know? go. And um, I, I think that he has the tools, the moxie, um, and everything else that you need in a quarterback uh, to be successful in this league and with the Jets, considering the new coaching change and the San Francisco style Shanahan style offense, which, if executed properly, any quarterback can be at least fairly good. And I think he's better than fairly good. I think he has the potential to be excellent. So Zach Wilson's my guy. All right. Who's up? So I'm going to, you know what, since Kyle burst my bubble, I'm going to go to Kyle with the next one. Let's, let's see who Kyle picks with the second pick of the draft. So when it came to evaluating quarterbacks in this draft, um, you know, we all knew what everybody pretty much knows is a pretty clear cut front runner. Um, and in having that front runner um, the whole time there, not moving, um, it's really been everybody else. And you've heard a lot about, I, I was very high on Mac Jones early. Uh, it seems that other people have gotten um, more excited about Mac Jones, um, especially with the rumors out of San Francisco that they could pick him at three. Um, but personally, Mac Jones has fallen a little bit for me as far as you know, what I've seen of his pro days and, and things like that. I, I don't have him in my, in my top four um, right now. So with that said, um, very impressed with Justin Fields at the end of the year. I thought his competition that he played against was very high um, and he played through a lot of adversity. My big knock on Zach Wilson early on was that I really didn't like the competition level and, uh, and, and it made me, it made me nervous um, because his numbers were gaudy and, but they were gaudy against competition that was a little bit suspect at times. However, the more that I've watched film, the more that, um, the more that I, I have dug into him and, and all the character issues cleared. And um, when you think about the situation that our front office is in with Donald um, getting Donald a new home, was the key to making this definitely a quarterback at pick two. So um, I am also going to go with Zach Wilson out of BYU uh, for pick number two. Um, 
I am, I am confident that if the brain trust of the New York Jets determined that Zach Wilson gave us a better chance to be a championship team than Sam Darnold, then I am happy that they have taken the steps that they have taken. Um, it remains to be seen how that's going to work out. But when you look at um, when you look at at what needs to be done, there needs to be somebody in there that's going to lead this team, and and I'm hopeful that Zach Wilson will do that. Nice job, Kyle. Great, great way to articulate that. All right, and we got it done in exactly five minutes. So the next two minutes and thirty seconds will be taken by Kerry. I want to hear what Kerry has to say with his number two draft pick. My number two draft pick is Zach Wilson. You look reluctant. Yeah, bro. you look very, kind of reluctant. very. <laughs> what, um, well, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't say very. I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to um, make it seem like uh, I think that the Jets are making a poor choice. Um, you know, I've I've been very vocal about um, in defense of our general manager in terms of his methodical way of uh, making decisions. Uh, whether it's from the perspective of um, the draft or from the perspective of free agency. And it seems like they have made a methodical decision as it relates to um, potentially drafting Zach Wilson, uh, who I call Russell Wilson light. Um, and I don't just, <laughs> I don't mean just from weight perspective um, because, you know, my, my, my theory was, when you have the draft capital that we have uh, in place, the Jets have in place, had in place, um, keeping Darnold, if you put, if you had put the right um, uh, Weapons combination of, of draft picks and um, and signees in free agency, I think he would have been successful. Um, however, uh, clearly our brain trust wants to go in a different direction, believes they should go in a different direction. And, and it, and it should be said that what I heard a lot of uh, when making the decision, part of it, maybe 60, 40 split was based on financial considerations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always been about cheap labor and about, um, you know, taking the advantage of being able to have quality players play under contracts that are, team um friendly friendly mm -hmm. so i think this is that you know played a, a significant part in making this decision so i'm gonna go full on with with what the brand trust is going with and uh decide that um zach wilson is uh the direction that the organization should go all right so um b it's up to you my man yeah yeah Bring it up. What, what you got? all right i mean i i you know it's unanimous here. You know, we got Zach Wilson, right, at, at, as the pick here for me as well. Um, poor qua. What? Poor qua. Poor qua. Poor qua. Because I was first of all, I wanted to agree with Brandon, so that was the first reason. You know, because I, I always want to agree with Brandon. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. That is dripping in sarcasm. Dripping. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show. <laughs> Um, so, so for me, you know, Curry mentioned the financial, you know, reasons, obviously there, um, the, he said 60, 40, I don't know which one was 60, which one was 40 as far as financial versus 60 financial, 60 financial. I, I, I call, you know, <laughs> um, I call bogus on that number. I say a lot of it had to do with talent level. And, um, I think, yeah, financial was a piece of the puzzle, but, you had the opportunity if things were 60 40 um, to keep Donald and get a haul for that second round pick, you know, that, that number two pick. If it was just as easy as that, think about what they got for Donald a second, a fourth, and a sixth. What would they have gotten for that number two pick? You can just, look at, the, you can just look at what, what San Francisco paid. Absolutely. To get up, what, was to that, what was that? Two first rounds in addition to moving up to, you know, in order to move up to three? It was more than what we asked. Miami, what we, what we gave up for Darnold. I mean, well, clearly that. I mean, it was it was a landslide as far as the difference was concerned. So I think the talent level was, um, you know, was significant. And to me, the telling stat, and this is when I 
jumped off the Donald bus was his numbers when he had a clean pocket. And they were he was the worst quarterback in the league with a clean pocket. So when everything went well, blocked well, everything, he still wasn't accurate and wasn't delivering the ball to the right person. And when I started really watching the film of Zach Wilson, boy, does that kid put the ball there. Yeah, I mean, I, there. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about just, you know, Justin Fields there and it's a touchdown and it's like, you know, the, 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 the wide receiver has to turn around to get it. Right. I'm talking about the ball is here, exactly where it should be. And the level of difficulty for some of these throws were just off the chart. So yeah. when I looked at the talent level of what we currently had, what, what's the upside there? 15th in the league because right now you're 35th versus Zach Wilson coming in and everything else is on his side of the ledger as far as financial and all those other things. It just, it was a, it was a no brainer for me. And I, I like everything that I've seen since then, as far as character and, and, and some of the other stuff as well. Um, so Zach Wilson is the guy for me, man. Hopefully uh, it turns out correct. Yeah. Brandon, do we have any time left in the segment? No, we are about uh, 45 seconds over, but I'll let so, you get last thoughts and then we'll move on. All right. The last note I want to put in on this is the rumor that we shared with each other via text that San Francisco had offered a first rounder for Sam Donald and that we turned down that offer because we did not have a clean bill of health yet on Zach Wilson from shoulder shoulder surgery. And we hadn't finished evaluating these quarterbacks. So to go back to what Kerry was saying, I really, if that is true, if that's even remote. And it was before his pro day too. So the evaluation process was not even close to being complete. So if that's even remotely true, it gives me even more trust in our organization that we would not, um, you know, push the chips all in without being very calculated. Right. Um, and, um, and, and it, it makes me, it makes me happy that these are the people in charge because I don't know, I don't know what McCagnan would have done. And I mean, McCagnan's the guy that picked Kristen Hackenberg. Um, so, <laughs> oh my God, um, oh my God. I don't know. I don't know what he would have done, but um, it's just to me. It's just it's icing on the cake. Like if they feel that this is the dude, then this is their guy, and they're gonna go. They're gonna put him in the best position they possibly can. And I don't think that. I think that if they had stayed with Donald, they would have done the same for him. If that was their guy, right? Yeah. But um, the one big thing that's missing from all this is Adam Gase. Yeah. So. We can't blame it on him anymore, and we can't worry about what he's going to do or not, not do. Um, we got to in solo we trust. And listen, okay. you know, uh, we're, we're about to move on in about 10 seconds here. I just want to say one thing. I wish Sam Donald well. I just think that Sam Donald leads, needs a little bit more to be good, and I think that Zach Wilson can be good with even a little bit less. You know what I'm saying? I think he's that talented. But I think, I think uh, Donald has has – has uh, the ability to be uh, uh, more successful in Carolina than he does with the Jets. But let's move on, guys, all righty? Kyle, if we can just put that uh, uh, screen up. Well, right. we got to make our pick, so. Yeah, this is where the yeah. draft starts. Yeah, this is where the draft starts, baby. Take the pick. Yeah. And so if you make pick, it'll automatically right. scroll down to 20. I'm coming, I'm coming over to the plus to pick Zach Wilson. Okay. Don't pick wrong. And the pick is in. <laughs> the pick all is right. in. Trey Lance and Justin Fields going. Uh, look at that. Waddle's gone. Kyle Pitts Bunch is still there. Kyle Pitts is still there. Kyle Pitts is. Oh, he's gone. To the Giants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah Owusu Kamoa. I hope I pronounced your name right. Michael Parsons gone. Mm, I see who. Oh, <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna yeah. reject. Wow. You know what? I wouldn't take that, that pick anyway. They're not giving me enough. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, all right. So you know what? What I forgot to establish. Um, all right, I went. I went first last time. Who went last? Brian. Yep. Brian, Brian why don't you start it off and go first? I'll be the uh, uh, the, the the deal breaker. Okay. If, oh, if the, we end the time, you, up, so. this is you as the tiebreaker. I, I don't know if I trust this. This was a setup. <laughs> we didn't even have a tiebreaker for the first one, man. We need. We, we're going to need to give a little context for that. <laughs> Cupid's arrows, Cupid. I'm and, doing it. I don't care. And, and, and we're not. We're not going to need it on back out. I don't think. I, well, what do they call the thing that the, the arrows go in? <laughs> quiver. It's quiver of arrows. All right. Wow. Okay. Um. Whoa! 
Ooh. Wow, yeah, yeah. This is Ooh. Wow. wow, wow. Okay. All right, all right, all right. You better pick the right person, B. I mean, listen, you know what I mean? I, I ain't scared. I ain't scared to defend whoever I want to throw up there. You know what the clock I'm saying? is on too. I mean, yeah, whatever. Actually, you no, know, no, the clock's not on. As soon clock. as you make that first pick, the clock will be on. No, the clock should be on there. I bet. Yeah. Boom, it's on. Hurry up. I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. Up. I'm ready. Everybody else ready? You let you, yeah. you let me know. I'm let's go. Everybody ready? Curry, uh Kyle, you, I, you ready? I'm, I'm more ready. I'm more ready. ready. All right, all right. So so so, so so take take that off. Take that off. Take that. Take that. Take that off. <laughs> you know what I mean? And th- and this is where I'm going. That number twenty three. You gotta say it too, because I can't see it. Oh, absolutely. It's Tevin Jenkins, baby. Ooh. That that's 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 number twenty three for for me. And why is that? You say and you ask. Um, wow. Wow. At, um. So so at, at what position? So okay. Well, l- l- let me let me talk about it. Um. So best right tackle, I believe in this draft. Right. We already have a left tackle, a beast. Um. He is a bear. Right. Absolute bear. Greater. Uh. I mean, pro football focus. Um, had him as the number three, I believe, tackle, um, and that's left or right in 2020. And when you think about, you know, his ability, could he move inside and be guard and be right next to Becton? Think about the left side of the line if he could start off inside and then, you know, move outside and then replace Fant eventually at right tackle. I believe it provides you that flexibility. But the dude, you can't watch tape of this guy without him knocking down and finishing his blocks, absolutely eliminating the guy on the other side of the ball. So when I think about somebody that can dominate and you think about the the line that we're trying to build um, and, and, you know, he's flexible, he can he, he, he's he's mobile and he's just huge, a mountain of a man. So when I think about him now. Being able to be a strong tackle. And I, I know AVT's out there. And I know he's going to be on somebody's card. Or a couple people's cards here. But when I look at somebody that is a tackle. An excellent tackle. But can play inside. Versus somebody who's an excellent guard. That can play outside. I think the value for me. Is the excellent right tackle. That can potentially move inside. And I'd rather spend my number 23 on that. Than anything else. Now I say that all to say, if this broke the way it does when the actual draft happens, I'm moving down a couple of slots <laughs> and picking up a second rounder. Right? I'm trading down a little bit because now I still got both my guys potentially there. And I like ABT too, but Tevin is a phenomenal right tackle who can move inside. I think there's more value on that, and that's why I select him. All right, and you and you made your time. Good job, Kerry. Your brother's right next. I mean, Brian, your brother, Kerry's right next to you. Why don't you go ahead and take it away, Kerry? What say you, Kerry? So, um, for similar reasons, I choose AVT, Mm. Elijah Vera Tucker. Mm -hmm. And um, but for the same reasons, but different choices as per. So, yes, Elijah Vera Tucker is versatile. He played both positions, both the tackle and the guard positions at a high level, at a high level. For USC. So um, when, when we talk about what we need on on this team, I think outside of um, quarterback, I think guard and tackle in that order um, are our primary um, positions of need that are available and are of value at number 23. The reason that I don't choose a dominant tackle per se that, you know, had more way more snaps at tackle and was made way more effective at tackle than at guard when you when you when you because I don't I'm not saying I don't like Jenkins because I do. I really do. But I just like ABT more. Right. We have a problem. We have McGovern starting at center. We have Van Roten starting at guard on the right side. On the left side, we have Lewis starting at guard. All in all three of them need to be gone. However, we could move Van Ro- excuse me, McGovern to guard, mm-hmm. um, put Draft ABT center. from center, put ABT at left guard, or switch them up. 
right? Or we could say, you know what? We'll put AVT at tackle and put McGovern at guard and, and uh, you know, sort of switch it up. But my point is that I think the, the biggest part of what I, what I value at the guard, tackle, center position is the versatility. And I think that AVT offers that um, at the highest level, more so than Jenkins does. Mm, all right, all right, all right. I don't know. All right. Maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there's there's a there's I'm a glad lot of we truth. We can't curse on this, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot there's a lot of truth in what my brother said. Um, uh, and, and because we uh, and because Fant is really hasn't really played poorly. He's been the, he's been below average. He's bro. been he's been. I mean, you know, we, we for whatever reason he gets a pass with, and, with the guards Van, are played with Van Roten on his left side. You put it ABT a, next it to was him. A left tackle in Seattle. He 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 transferred over to right tackle this year. You put Van Roten. Kyle loves Van. You put though. you Can't. put Van Roten <laughs> on the bench, and you and you allow. AVT to, to slot in that right guard next to Fant, and you move McGovern over to the left guard, you got a different looking, different entirely different looking offensive line. I mean, who, who's to say that Tevin can't play at any of the other spots that you just mentioned? I'm not saying he can't. I'm right. just saying I'm, AVT has done well, it at a high level. Well, okay. Well, well, I, yeah. I, I agree with both of you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I want to hear from Kyle and see what Kyle has to say. Yeah, I want my time. Kyle, your 23rd I don't pick want my time. Yes. Go ahead. Take it Sorry, Kyle. All right, so my pick is ABC. Um, I mean, and I, knew, I knew it was going to be. I was going to be a dissenter. It's all I good. I can okay, stand okay. out. It's my time now. Go ahead. Time <laughs> time whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, no, in, 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 in all seriousness, um, I, I, I agree with, with all the things Terry said, and we have talked about this a lot. Um so I actually I tweeted at Daniel Jeremiah the other day when they were asking for uh, questions for Move the Sticks. Um, you know, this is the year to me of the interior um, offensive lineman, uh, versatile guard tackle center combo. And in my opinion, uh, just like Trevor Lawrence, there's clearly Panay Sewell is the best lineman in this draft. And second and third are Slater and ABT. Um, and I love Jenkins. I really love Jenkins. And if we, if Jenkins is still on the board at 34, I might pound the table for him. Um, but this pick right here with Elijah Vera Tucker falling to us, um, in my opinion, I've mocked this out. I think the Jets in real life would have to trade up to get this guy um, to 16, perhaps before the Raiders and the Colts. Um, and I just think that he has, he has a whole year of film at left guard and a whole year of film at left tackle. Tevin Jenkins is a potential great guard in the NFL, but his, all his films at right tackle. And I think that with that said, as close as these guys are to me, AVT is, is the way that I go with it. And I am just ecstatic that he is available for us at 23 without having to trade up, without having to give away any extra stuff. This guy's plug and play. You put him next to Mackay Beckman, whether you're going to have McGovern move around or not. I truly hope that McGovern can go back to, um, you know, his his top 10 center from two years ago um, status. That would be really good. Um, and then we can find another guard um, to, to upgrade with. Fant, I, I'm, I want to, I want to, a, an insurance plan for Fant perhaps drafted in this in this draft, but not at 23. Um, so I respectfully disagree with Brian, um, and I love Tevin Jenkins, but ABT is um, – I'm, I'm, pound, I'm jumping on top of the table that we can get ABT here. Okay. Yeah, right. and, and listen, right. I, I, I wouldn't be mad if he ends up being a draft pick. I just like Tevin better. All right, um, Brandon, hey. what say you? Yeah. What say I? Brian, you're going to love me. Okay. Actually, no, I. you're not. <laughs> <laughs> because my 23rd pick in the draft is Elijah Vera Tucker. All right. Offensive lineman from USC. Okay. Uh, wow. Fine. Let me just say one thing. Yes. yes. I have the ultimate respect for your point of view on Tevin Jenkins. I love Tevin Jenkins. Mm -hmm. 
But for all the reasons that Kyle mentioned, I'm, he, he just nudges past him just a little bit. And yes, Kyle, I will be pounding the table at 34 if he's still available as we proceed on for, uh, uh, for Tevin Jenkins. I love them both. But for the same reasons that Kyle was talking about, Elijah Vera Tuck has a whole season at guard, a whole season at tackle. And then when you start, where the professional analysts start comparing him to Quentin Copeland. Yes, uh, Quentin, Quentin Nelson. Uh, Thank you for making Quentin that Nelson. point. Thank you for making that point. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, and it's not just one or two. It's the multitude. And they're, 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 they're saying that his game is like his. Right. Forget who, about who, it. Who, by the way, um, Indy drafted at six, who we traded the pick to. Yes. Yes. And Indy, you know, don't be surprised if Indy makes it to the Super Bowl this year, by the way, because they're – team is loaded their offense and their defense so and they're talking about moving him to tackle Continue. exactly you know what i'm saying um but tevin jenkins i absolutely love um i i think he's a road grader himself um but uh, elijah vera tucker just just nudges him out just by a little bit in my view so i'm going with that and brian uh three out of four you know uh want uh avt and that's what we're going with so let's mark it Let's pick him. Let's wait, 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 wait. Can, can, can I get a dissenting? You know, last. Yes, yes, uh, yes, just, yes, just yes, quick, yes, since I was yes, the only yes. one that did not pick him. Mm-hmm. All right. Of law. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, 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 um, you know, pro football focus, love, you know, how they evaluate players and, and everything. So, um, 78.4 is how AVT rated as a guard in 2019. 81.8 is how he rated as a tackle. All right. Um, Tevin Jenkins, 92 as a tackle in 2020. Elite performance from him. And AVT, I think, above average. No, 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 no. Not above average. He, very good. I don't think what, you, what you're talking about, the guy on Indy, I don't think he performed to that level, to that degree. Uh, Quentin Nelson was, I mean, he he was in Quentin argument. Quentin Nelson? Yes. He was in an argument for number one. In, I'm saying Quentin, I'm saying that AVT is not up to Quentin Nelson's oh, I see you. level, okay, okay. right? That's what I'm saying. saying. I'm right? Saying. So that, that, I'm that's all I'm saying. Him to. I'm that's all I'm saying. Right, right. You know what I mean? So, you know, just and, don't and, think and, it's compared. And one last thing. We are moving to a zone blocking system, which is a little bit better for more athletic tackles. Sure. Kevin Jenkins would be fine in that place. I think this works more to fan strength a little bit. It does. I, an average right tackle. It does. And I, I think that and I also think that it, it will help McGovern out as well. The thing that we really need is to really focus on the interior part of our line. You know what I'm saying? I need to get, uh, um, you know, Van, Van, Van Roten out of there. I need to get Alex Lewis out of there. I think uh, that if we have McGovern at center in this new scheme, he'll, he'll be better. And he started playing better towards the end of the season. We put AVT in there next to him. It's only going to make him stronger. Offensive line, you're as strong as your weakest link. We got to get the weak links out of there. AVT's in there. That right side of the line is no longer a weak link. And then the system that we have in there will just make them stronger. So that is my um, my overall sentiments as to why I want AVT. But I love Tevin Jenkins. And if he's not there, I'm picking Tevin Jenkins. And I think we all love love Tevin Jenkins. When you're talking about best player available versus need, this is – even either with AVT or Tevin Jenkins, you're addressing both of those things at the same time. Absolutely. It meshes. Absolutely. It does mess. So like I said, smart. I'm not angry. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's smart. But at the same time, this is the last thing I'll say about this is that if you had to if you had to rank the offensive lineman that you wanted to replace currently on the Jets offensive line, Fant would be next to Becton. And you'd want to replace every single other one before fan. So, you know, the, the whole, the right tackle argument, whereas I would love to upgrade right tackle, it is not the most pressing need. The interior of that offensive line is the most pressing need. And um, I think, I think we have a good pick here. So I'm, I'm, I'm switching over to the. Uh, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job. Switch over. Switch over. I'm going to leave it there. He was going to He wanted to say no, something. I'm going to leave it there. I we ain't got time. We got, got they, they, everybody yeah, knows how I feel. We ain't got no time. <laughs> Yeah, word. All right. I am. Vanna White. (laughs) Elijah Vera Tucker is the pick. 
Oh boy, here we go. There goes Tevin Come Jenkins on. to the Browns. Oh, there goes David's Stephen Collins. Of course he's going. Creed Humphrey. Three Etienne. picks Kane later. Farland. They whiz. Tag wow. on it. Saving Collins is gone. Of course, I love that, that kid. You knew that, man. That's another right, arrow. Need... That's another arrow. I wanted that. We need to evaluate um, who who's, is who's available. Left here. Right. Oh, I already got mine. I already All know right, what I'm so doing. Just going back through this draft to see where we're at. So, Barmore off the board, Quiddy Pay off the board, mm-hmm. Tevin Jenkins, Jamin Davis, Zaven Collins to the Saints. Jason Owe. This is where it starts TV. to get interesting. Sure. Okay. And then Creed Humphrey, another person we had our eye on. Terrence Morrison Jr., Travis Etienne, and Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley falling all the way to 33, top of round two. Bad back. At one point, <laughs> he was a he was a top 10 pick. He was the highest rated cornerback at one point. Ahead of Patrick Sertain. All righty. And then, uh, yeah, so I have. Just so that everybody understands, these are the PFN rankings. Right. Um, showing us who the, uh, the the top players available are. So according to them, the top 32 on the board have have left the building. So. I mean, this is kind of rare when you do a mock that um, it's gone kind of exactly the way um, it's supposed to go in a lot of ways here. So, why's my heart racing, man? <laughs> if you don't know who to pick, Cause, cause, no, because this guy is gone. I mean, it's it's more right. of that That's than really anything what else. It is. This guy no, is I mean, gone. I think you know we 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 we've passed the whole. Okay, we know what the first round in your heart beats a little bit more. You know, with with pick number three, um, and then now we're getting into like where you really have to start really being smart and thinking about it and thinking ahead. And this is where it's like, oh my goodness, okay, there are certain people that you like that are off, and then you're gonna have to draft around it and still draft really well. So this is the exciting part. So that's why my heart's beating all fast and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, show show me a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, scroll down a little bit. Okay, mm. all right. Yeah. Oh, so the big question here is going to be: Are we? I know, right? <laughs> are we? Are, are we looking at? I don't know if you um, know. Are we looking at drafting for need, or are we looking at drafting for BPA right now? Um, I think at, I'm looking at trading out of this division. There. I mean, and, and it's also listen. This is PFN's, you know, list right. I mean, big board. Right. Kerry has his. Kyle has his. The, the Jets will have theirs. So I have one. You know, Thank you, Pete. Uh, I don't know if you have one, to be yeah. honest with you. But that was <laughs> just David Collins that was on there, and that was it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, yeah, pro, pro Football Focus has theirs as well. So, you know, just because they're they're listed in that order on PFN does not mean that everybody has it the same, right? So, um, you know, I guess we'll see what it ends up looking like. Mm. All right. All right, so uh, you know what? Whenever you're ready, I'd say Kerry should go first in this one, and Kyle should hold should should hold the uh, the tiebreaker. Good, because I I still need to figure it out. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And I there's so be, many. I might reasons. be swayed. I might be swayed by some of your picks. So okay. uh, go ahead. So here's here's my thinking. I'm I'm picking, and I have no idea how to pronounce his name. So I won't even try. He's the cornerback out of Syracuse um, at 34. And this is this is strictly because we cannot trade out. This is strictly for the purposes of need. In addition to the fact that if I um, tell you who I really want, which is Quinn Miners, um, I'm not picking him at 34. You mean Josh Myers? No. Quinn Quinn Myers, the center for uh Wisconsin Whitewater. Oh, Miners. Oh, Miners. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um because of the fact that our next pick isn't until 66 and he won't be available at 
66. Um, but I think the value here is that cornerback. When you look at our depth chart at cornerback, um, we have, uh, bless Austin on one side and Bryce Hall, who I love, who I love on the other side. However, our depth is suspect at best. And, um, we need an upgrade at this particular position. Um, I know where our defense is going to change and where it'll be more of a zone scheme. So I think you can get, um, corners later on in the draft that can fit your scheme. But I think this particular player, um, will, uh, significantly upgrade the position, um, at a position of need, um, where we are razor thin at best razor thin. Um, so that's why I'm going with, uh, the cornerback from Syracuse. You got it, man. You know, I I'm going to go next and then it'll be Brian and then uh, Kyle will back clean up. Um, so Kerry, just to double down on what you're saying for me, it was a battle, you know, I'm going with the cornerback position as well for all the reasons that you said, you know, it's like a bear kitchen in there in our, in, in our quarterback room in, in our cornerback room. But uh, I believe the way to pronounce his name is a Nigerian brother. Um, uh, Ifiatu Melofanu, and he's a cornerback out of Syracuse. Um, he is a really, really good uh, zone scheme type of cornerback, good size, good speed. And for me, it was between him and Eric Stokes. I really like the kid Eric Stokes out of Georgia. I think he ran a 4-2-5 in the 40. Um, he's uh, uh, um, just a, a really good, good size, six foot one or six foot two, blazing speed. <clears throat> and can play man just as well as, as cover. But I feel like um, this cornerback out of Syracuse is going to fit our system even better. And um, he's known for being tough, aggressive, and will get up in anyone's face. So I'm going to go with um, Ifiatu Melifanu out of, out of Syracuse cornerback. I like him a lot, and we need to stockpile some cornerbacks in our cornerback room of the New York Jets. Wait, is that the same guy that Curry had, or is it? Yeah, same guy. Yeah. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Guy. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. hold up my uh, my card. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no worries. Here's my card right here. Booyaka shot. There you go. Love mercy. All right. Wow. All right, uh, Kyle, can, can you go? No, it's your no, turn. No, no, no. You, you... <laughs> <laughs> that was a resounding. No, it's your turn. <laughs> Don't be scared. Don't be scared, B. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not scared. I'm, uh, man. Um, oh lord! It gets hard now, man. It gets hard. I'm telling, man. I'll, I'll just tell you right now. I'm not picking the guy that you guys just picked. Okay, right, me, me, me right. neither. Which, right. which is fine. Yeah. Um, well, we, we win anyway, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I just, <laughs> you don't win uh, unless Brian picks him. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Like I said, we got to talk it up. We win. It's got to be three, right? No. Well, well it's gotta, it, it starts three. off. It's got to be three. It's right. got to be three, or if you guys pick the same person, you have the ability to be the deal breaker, Kyle. But if you guys right. split, then me and Kerry win. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So, um, All right. Let's talk on the side. <laughs> <laughs> no wow. text. Wow. All right. So, um, so, so this is this is my pick here. You know what I mean? Going Wyatt see, Davis. I can't see it. Going Wyatt Davis. Wyatt Davis. Wyatt Davis. Okay. So, um, Wyatt Davis is the pick for me. Um, best guard who played guard in 2020 mm -hmm. in the draft. Mm -hmm. And when you look at... Um, did he get injured at the end of the season? He did. Mm -hmm. He did. Um, but, you know, something that he's recovering from and, mm -hmm. and not... It's like, he has an injury ACL? history. Um, no, he didn't it, miss a whole game. He just no. missed part of one. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not, the last yeah. game. And it was lingering. It, it was kind of lingering all year. Then all of a sudden, you know, in the playoffs, just it just got... Top, yeah. yeah, it just went over the top and stuff like that. So, um, so I, I don't... It's nothing structural. Right. So I'm not not concerned about injury being an issue here. But when you look at the top guard that played guard in, in 2020 um, and being able to slot in there, listen, you know, my plan was to Evan Jenkins and you have Wyatt Davis come in there. We need offensive line help. We all realize that here. I didn't want to reach for a cornerback and I felt like we would be reaching for a cornerback here at this slot. So when you look at BPA, and um you know rankings and stuff like that i felt like we're why davis doesn't last until the third round 
Um, he does, so yeah. he does not. So and, and could you you know and, and listen if um man who's the who's the center from Oklahoma? Yeah, yeah. If, if Creed is, is there, if, yeah. if Creed is there, I, oh, I think he's absolutely. he's a selection there too. Yeah. But you know what? We got at number two Zach Wilson. I want to do everything that we can in order to shore up that offensive line. Not only the starters, but also you know the second team as well. And listen, if we have ABT at one guard and we slide in Wyatt Davis at the other guard, I mean, <laughs> that it, did you guys want an interior? Well, that's interior. Right, I mean, those are the guard spots, and that picks up everything. That's every other player you've uplifted at those spots, so that should make both tackles better and the center better at this point. Yeah. So why not spend the time? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wanted to go wide receiver potentially, but I felt like in the third round there might be some available. I, I'm willing to wait. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm willing. I'm willing to wait. I'm saying I'm, that's, I, I, listen, that's I want... very different than the conversation we no, were just having what? over text. Well, n- listen, I, I, I no, I, I like Fellas. Rondale Moore. Listen, I like Rondale Moore. He's available, I, isn't he? Available yeah, right there, he is. thirty-four. Absolutely. He is. Okay, but I, what I, I, I value yeah. Wyatt Davis at this point uh, a little bit more. That okay. All. Okay. That all. All right. okay. All, all right. right, that's my pick. That's what I say. All right, all right, Kyle. Coach. He's that right, clean coach. up. Then he's the tiebreaker. He looks a little, a little way, shook, right? By the way, the Knicks oh, just won. A Go little ahead. bit. It looks like. Oh wait, uh, wait. Can, can we do a pause for the for the Knicks victory? <laughs> Boom. Six okay. in a row. It's a and, and right now, the number six slot, maybe the number five or four. At the half today, a game I behind four. Half a game behind four. Oh my gosh. Two of those six were against the Pelicans, also, which means what? Swept them for the year. I mean, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? That's I, what I'm saying. Anyway, I, anyway, well, just a, you a commercial. Was it a you beat who's game in front or of you? More of an R.J. Barrett game. I, we don't know. We were just sitting in here talking to you, Clint. Reggie Bullock game. <laughs> Reggie Bullock. Reg, Reggie Bullock All right. game. All right, enough of that. All right, um, go ahead, Kyle. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Kadarius Tony, University of Florida. What? Did he do that? He just did. And I'll tell you why. Oh, Lord. Um, Yeah, Kerry. I was very very happy about the fact that the guard combo guy that I wanted fell to us at um, at 23. Um, I have other other people that are also guard combos and right tackles that I have my eye on for later on. Um, without spending this high value pick on that. So my thought is, and also I have Stokes rated higher than okay. um, the, uh, the the corner that you guys picked mm-hmm. from Syracuse. Yeah, he's up there for me too. Um, uh, as well as Tyson Campbell. Um, so with that said, I didn't even really want to go Stokes here. Um, I thought about Nick Bolton, linebacker out of Missouri. Um, mm. but just like Brian really likes Rondell Moore, who I also like, um, I think Kadarius Tony is an absolute problem. And, um, I think that whoever does get him similar to how I felt about, um, Lynn Bolden last year. And I think he's going to be a problem once, once he hits his stride in Miami. Um, I think Kadarius Tony is, is somebody who could do a lot in the new offense that we have. It's been compared to Debo Debo Samuel, who did a lot of those same things in in San Francisco. Um, So uh, I know that we're not going to pick him, but that's... uh, Wait, 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 wait. Nobody said that we're not going to pick him. I just said that my initial pick was Wyatt Davis. Does not mean that I can't change my pick based on conversation that we had. And you know what? I'm, you know who I'm changing really? it to? Nah. Huh? What? what? So nah. We ain't got time for all that. How listen, much time listen, we got we, left? We How have, much time we, we got have, left? We have changed. How much time we got left? What? How much time we got left? You got 50 seconds left. Hurry in the up. 10 minutes market. What? I oh, mean, were you, were you eating on his time? You well, eating on coach's no, 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 time? No, I'm not eating on coach's time. What I'm saying is, I'm done. So you I have, got, the, you right, I have the right to change my pick. Do okay. I not? All right, good. Right. Do what you want. So I'm changing my pick to Tony. Is what I'm saying. Oh snap! I mean, well, that what we we have to have a consensus or. The, the the guy that has the, the, the trigger right now is who? I'll ride you inside a trader. Go ahead. I'm not no inside a trader. If we're listen, if I value so to me, wide receiver, the wide receiver he has selected mm-hmm. is a 
higher value as far as pro football focus, and I've, that's why I've been doing my research. Then your pick. On, no, 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 no. Well, my, it's equivalent to my pick. About okay. in, in in the high sixties. Okay. Your pick is in the seventies. Okay. So, so to me, if I'm looking at it, and if I'm trying to lead one way or another, I I think that cornerback potentially could be there in the third round. Potentially, you're, you're saying um, valued by whom? Who's making these? Who's making these? These? I'm values? looking at. I'm looking at PFF. That that's who I look at. You know. Well, this is PFN. PFN hasn't has them higher like, than that. Like I, like I said, everybody, you, Kyle, Brandon, unless Brandon only has one player on it. Um, everybody has a different big board. The right. Jets have a different one okay. too. So you know what I mean. I, unless I got one player. On <laughs> where, where, Brian, where does Stokes compare <laughs> oh, mom, to? Um, in a, I don't want to butcher the guy's name. The the Nigerian gentleman from Syracuse. So Stokes, Melifanu. you're talking about PFF or you or in my mind? PFF. Uh, PFF is a quantifiable analytic. PFN is is subjective. Right, mm-hmm. right. So Stokes is below him. Looks like uh, in the 80s. Stokes is at 72, right behind him. Okay. Right. So almost equivalent. So that's a judgment call, right? Yeah, that's a coin toss. It's a coin yeah. toss. That's why that's why I had him like this, and I said it from from the giddy up. But all right, so so let's move on then. All right, so well, we have to now. We got to do a tiebreaker. We're going with with Tony for Brian, Tony for uh, uh for Kyle, and for me it's and, and Kerry. It's the cornerback out of of Syracuse, um, Ifiatu Melofanu. Um, Kyle is a tiebreaker. So where are we going, Kyle? Because we need to move on. Tony. All right, let's make the pick then. All right. I don't think you. I don't think you guys will regret this. I <laughs> yeah, I give it a boo as well. Let's, let's put it up on the screen. Can't see it. Hold on. All right. I might even go. I might even switch over to to Wyatt. I mean, but you didn't. You do. <laughs> but uh, but again, you. It doesn't make sense now because it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't. Wouldn't make any sense. You know what, Kerry? I might switch over to Wyatt too. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you know me. Yeah, yeah. You, you know. I wasn't doing it for that for his purpose. Try me on a limb, bro. I mean, I'm not, you know, don't, you don't loop me in with Brandon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a terrible loop to be in. Right. That's a great loop. <laughs> that's a bad loop. That's a, great that's loop. a Groundhog <laughs> Day loop. Everybody here. That's Groundhog that's Day. Yes. Look, why, why Wyatt Davis going 36? Right you know Check what I mean? out Wyatt Davis going. Boom. Oh. When Mertz went early. Look at him. 38. He's Landon skyrocketed. Dickerson going 42. Giants aren't going to Oh, Rondell Moore. Come on, baby. You supposed to? Yeah, see you later, Rondell oh, Moore. Yeah, but you got you got Rondell Moore plus some, in my opinion. Monte Williams gone. That's high for Damani Brown. Gray Smith, I was looking at him, hoping he would fall. Eric Stokes, I love Eric Stokes. Gone. What I'm doing? Uh, let's see who's available, baby. Uh, can you scroll? Yeah, let's see. Ooh. Mm. Okay, so we got we're picking at 66. We got uh Jabril Cox as the number 55 player on PFN's board. Liam Eichenberg, if you did want to go back to that right tackle route, Liam Eichenberg is is known as a plug and play right tackle. Character guy, um, high character guy. Yeah. Um we haven't picked a corner yet. Elijah Molden is more in the Brian Poole nickel category from what I have seen. Jalen Mayfield is a a combo guard tackle. Um, Josh Myers still there at 73. Um, Tyson Campbell, another cornerback that I like. What is Tyson Campbell's PFF grade, Brian? No, I like him too. Who is the tiebreaker? Kerry? This round? Yeah, it should be Kerry. He hasn't got one yet, I don't think. Uh, 108. Tyson Campbell, 108 PFF. So, if you got Tyson Campbell at 86, that'd be pretty good. How about Josh Myers? I like Josh Myers. This is his um 
injury stuff that I'm pretty 154. Josh Myers was a Liz Frank um, surgery. Yeah. That was his, yeah. 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 his deal. Hey, Kyle, can you just click on uh, defense and click on cornerbacks, please? I was forgetting. Okay, thank you. I'm good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> We're definitely in the the back end of edges right now. I think we were in the back end in the second round. All right. So, Kerry, you're the tiebreaker, right? Uh, is that how it works? Okay. Uh, Brian, you haven't gone first yet, right? I have not. I would not like to go first yet. <laughs> he doesn't want to reveal. All right. Uh, woo. Kyle, you can go first. If not, I'll go first. Or you I'll go first. Go. Huh? I haven't gone first yet. Let's, what, let's take it away then. Whenever you're what, ready, Kyle. Wait, wait, wait. Could you go back to all for a second? What would you like me to do? All. Hit, hit all on the uh, yeah, PFN. What is our next pick after this? 86? Yep. Yeah, this is this is tough for me. Yeah, but it's I'm, tough. It's starting to get tough right. now. But... Am I on the clock? Uh, negative, but uh, you're going first, right? You're on the clock. Are, are you ready? Yes. You're on the clock now, brother. All right. Um, I really, really, really like Liam Ectenberg here, but that's not where I'm going to go. I'm going to go... Kenneth Gainwell, running back, Memphis. Wow. The reason why is because in the last week, totally fell in love with, with his game. Um, I think he rounds out our running back room in a way in which even Travis Etienne wouldn't or Najee Harris wouldn't. Um, and that's um, in the fact that he is one of the, the best receiving threat running backs that I've seen, there was, I think two games, either one or two games where he um, had uh, over a hundred yards receiving, uh, I'm sorry, over a hundred yards rushing and 200 yards receiving. Um, I may be, I may have messed, I may, may have messed up that stat there, but I know that he has, he's been unbelievably um, productive in both categories. So um, we put that guy in there with um, with Ty Johnson and uh, with the Michael P. Ryan. Um, and I think that we have a really good group to work with there. So I'm going Gainwell, Memphis, um, although I really I, I, I wouldn't have to be talked into Eichenberg if the three of you pick that. All right. Um, Who's going? Who's going? I'll go. Okay. Um, so great, Kyle. Great job. Um, with the 66 pick in the draft, I'm going to go with, yeah, Kyle, Liam Eichenberg out of Notre Dame offensive tackle. Um, I think it is highly important when you have a quarterback drafted so high that you're risking a lot of them, you know, that you've traded your other, uh, first round high first round drafted quarterback in the name of, uh, Sam Darnold. Um, you've traded him away. You know that you're bringing in a rookie, all right? No matter how skilled or whatever he is, there's still going to be, um, you know, uh, uh, some bumps in the road for any rookie. Look at what happened with Peyton Manning, and he's one of the best ever. He had bumps in the road. But regardless of that, we need to do what we didn't do with Sam, put him in the best position to win. How do you do that? You protect your investment. How do you protect your investment at quarterback? Offensive line. Draft Tevin Jenkins. That's a, oh sorry. So, sorry, sorry. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> AP, yeah, like yeah, I said, which, which which I'm not against. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we already have Elijah Vera Tucker that we've uh uh concessed to uh having, and then you know, Liam Eichenberg has first round ability in my opinion, or high second round ability. Um he is someone that we can plug and play at right tackle right away. Uh, just like Tevin Jenkins, not as high a level as Tevin Jenkins, but um, 
he is one of those guys that could potentially be drafted in the first round. And um, I heard uh, Greeny on the show. Uh, uh, Greeny was actually interviewing the head coach of Notre Dame. The past 10 seasons, Notre Dame has produced first round offensive tackles in 10 seasons in a row. Basically, they're an offensive tackle factory now, just like how Penn State used to be linebacker U and Miami used to be tight end U and linebacker U. Actually, they, they just used to be NFL player U. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Notre Dame has become that, you know, that, that factory. So I trust in that system. I trust that. And, and you know, this is going to be a type of offense where more athletic linemen are going to uh, um, do better in. And I think since Fant is the right tackle, you know, and he's been playing average. I wouldn't mind moving him to guard to replace Van Van Rotten or Van Roten and seeing how he does since he's a more athletic tackle. Move him inside to guard, but put Liam in his position at right tackle. And then you would have Where was this idea in the first round? Gee whiz. You know what I'm saying? So then we would have our number one draft pick from last year. We'd have A V T this year. We'd have our center who has now better interior play, who now would play better because he was a top 10 uh, center in the league, McGovern. And then now he'll be flanked by better players. You're only as weak or strong as your weakest link. Our links just got stronger. I want Liam Eichenberg, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. Carry on. That's my guy. So I'll go. Um, So if you look at my board or my pick, you see there's a lot of stuff that's been scratched out. Right. (laughs) (laughs) At the end of the day, I went with Kenny Gainwell. Um, he is a versatile, again, I value versatility back that gives your quarterback who you just drafted a significant amount of, uh, of, um, what, what I would consider, uh, a safety valve. He had 610 receiving yards, um, 1,500 rushing yards, and that 610 receiving yards is sort of similar to what um, Saquon Barkley had uh, the year he was drafted. Now, I'm not comparing him to Saquon Barkley, clearly, because they're two specific specimens, but, you know, I think this guy is a significant weapon that can be utilized by our quarterback. Now, the reason that I did not go with Liam Eikenberg, and I could be swayed differently, is that the blaring thing that I see or that I've read is that his ability against quicker pass rushers on the edge is significantly questioned. And um, as a right tackle, uh, that can be problematic. That's going to be problematic for our quarterback or for any quarterback. Um, I missed that. Say that again, Kerry. As a right tackle, what? As a right tackle, that's going to be problematic for um, – uh, our quarterback, you know, what somebody is? coming off the edge, a speed rusher coming off the edge that can't be protected by our right tackle. And you're um, saying Fant can't, or you're saying Liam Eikenberg? I'm saying Liam, I- Liam Eikenberg has significant um, um, uh, issues, problems with, uh, when it comes to that. Speed uh, rushes off the speed edge. Speed rushes off the edge. It's, it's, <laughs> it's his mobility in getting okay. quickly out to the edge to, to um, protect. Um, again, if you can coach that away, then, hey, you know, uh, but I, I definitely uh, respect the um, history of uh, tackles being drafted from Notre Dame in the first round in the last several drafts. I understand that. Um, but I went with Kenny Gainwell for the reasons that I previously stated. All right. So uh, looks like it's on me. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm going to say that. No matter how this turns out, I think I'm going to be okay, right? And 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 like who we end up picking, but um, I pick Liam I, I can uh, in this selection. And the reason why I did is because I feel like Gainwell will still be there. We have a another third round pick, uh, we have our fourth round pick, and um, two fifth round picks as well. So I think Gainwell is still going to be there. But guys, let's not get it twisted. Love the kid. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. love the kid. Absolutely love the kid. But when I look at what we're trying to do this year, um, we've only drafted so far one offensive lineman. 
Uh, we have him in the first round. He's a guard. Um, again, I wanted Tevin Jenkins. I felt like he was a, a beast of a tackle. But Eichenberg, not a bad consolation prize. When you think yeah. about uh, who he is, a pro football focus, number 52, and we're picking 66. So yep. I think that there's value there. Um, the number 11th tackle in um, you know college football in 2020, right? So with an 89.9 grade, that's almost elite from that perspective. Argue it up. Argue right? it up. So, so when I look at it and I look at the value of the running back position, I want a running back. I want Gainwell. Let's, let's not get it twisted. I just don't want him at 66. I think that we can get him later on in this draft. Um, so for those reasons, Eichenberg is the pick for me. So, so am I the um you are the yeah, tiebreaker. All yeah. right, so I, I want to add something before you tie break. <laughs> go ahead, go, ahead, um, go ahead. If you have the choice of Jack Conklin or Alvin Kamara right now, who do you pick? <laughs> I, I'm picking I I'll be honest for with the, you. For this team. For this team. This, are you asking Kerry or all of us? Yeah, all of us. Yeah. I'm picking Jack Conklin because for this team right now without Sam Darnold and seeing the history of what happened of not having protection and how it just destroys your team from top to bottom, protect your investment. You know, let's not go ahead and ruin another quarterback. You know what I'm saying? We pick Sam Darnold at number three. We're picking now again at number two. Let's not create, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, an atmosphere where, where, where the New York Jets ruin quarterbacks. Protect your investment. I'm going Conklin, okay? I'm doing it. Yeah, and, and and for me, Kamara was a what? When was he drafted? Fourth. I think fourth it was rounder. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. yeah. So so and and that's why. You know, listen, we had ATN. If we was all gung ho about it, I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta use the second rounder on him, Najee Harris. You could have gone high with the running back. Um, I want a running back. I want somebody that's gonna be back there that can. And listen, I want Gainwell because I think he's a three down back. Um, I just think that I'm willing to wait for him in this particular draft. I'm not, you know, I, I listen, I, I, I would love both man from, from that perspective, but I think that in this draft, I'm willing to spend my draft capital at the top of the third on Eichenberg who can be my right tackle for the next 10 years versus, um, a running back at least at this point in time. So that's kind of where I'm at. Let me say one thing. I think. Let's just say we do not draft Gainwell in this particular mock draft. I'm going to roll the dice and borderline guarantee that by the time we hit pick number 86, that he's still on the board. I think he's still going to be on the board if we do not. Yeah, pick him. yeah, yeah. I think we're on, we're on the same page. B, I, yeah. you know, I think he's going to be there either in the late third or early fourth. That's, yeah. He's the that's... next running back picked by anybody. He's not going to be there. Okay. All right. I'm willing. So, to, I'm willing to wait. But go ahead. So now it's on Kerry. What's up, Kerry? I mean, did we sway you in any way with our arguments, you know? No. <laughs> it's Eichenberg. No. Oh, he went back to Eichenberg. That was a sway. Went back to Eichenberg. <laughs> that Pardon was a sway. Me. But we did sway you. Yeah. No, I was, I was, um, <laughs> I had Eichenberg written down before uh, Coach Kyle asked the question. <laughs> but for the same reasons that you had. Because yeah. I wanted to, I want to, and, and that Conklin, um, um, comparison yeah, comparison with Conklin to uh, who's the running back that we um, mentioned? Game Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara. Oh, oh, sorry. It, it that really sold it for me because you know that that made it clear that you know under the cir current circumstances, <clears throat> where our offensive line was putrid last year, and I have the choice of drafting a running back or a a long time right tackle. Then it's going to be my long. Yeah, and right think tackle. think about the running back. You're going to have the running back for five years max. You're going to have the <laughs> tackle for ten, right? You can yeah. have the tackle for ten. You might get th you might get three contracts out of that dude. You, you only right, I'm making right? the pick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. So that means that Gamewell was not picked. Let's see what happens. Ben Cleveland, I'm kind of high on as well, yeah, offensive guard. Uh-huh. And I'm high on Amon Ross, St. Brown, too, uh -oh. receiver out of uh -oh. U.S. <laughs> well, it looks like we, we got what we wanted. I think we got a unanimous. Right. <laughs> 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 Let's 
Wait, I mean, uh, listen, just slow down. Yeah, Everybody slow down. Right. <laughs> Who's the tiebreaker on this one? Um, I think either me or Brian, because I don't think he, no, actually I, I've been one. I think it's Brian. Yeah, I have not. So yeah, I'll I'll take the mantle this time. Yep, yep. Uh, Kyle, can you start from the top again? So the number 80 uh, in the PFN, Amari Rodgers, is the top. Um, Gainwell at 94. Revan Jordan at 91, another guy some of us have had our eye on. Can you have, we still don't have a, uh, have a corner. Uh, yeah, we don't. We still don't have a corner on the board. Mm-hmm. Can you click on defense for me, Kyle? Yes. Cornerbacks? Cornerback. Trill Williams was a kid that um, yeah. played high school football in um, in New York City. Uh, played for, um, I want to say he played for Cardinal Hayes or um, one of those one of those schools in in um, Queens, Bronx, Bronx or Yonkers. Um, really, really good high school football player. Got to watch him a lot. Um, had a good college career as well. A little, a little fiery, a little bit of a temper. I think he got ejected a couple times, or maybe for like targeting. Um, at Syracuse. At Syracuse, yeah. All right, you can go back to. Uh, oh. We did. We haven't picked an edge yet either. Yep. Um, well aware. So putting that up there too. Um, okay. All right. Um. Yeah. All I got to do is change one number for my card. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Who's going first? The tiebreaker? Or That's fine. Going first? That's fine. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, let's yeah, do that yeah. from now on. Tiger break goes first. All right. Uh, listen, man, quick. Kenny, gain well, baby. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Yep. Let's do it. And you know what it is. Y'all discussed it and talked about it. Alvin Kamara, like I said, will still be available at the bottom of the third. <laughs> right? So right. pick the tackle. Then you got the running back there. Um, and listen, if, if he wasn't there, I'd be a little salty. But um, I think that there are other running backs later, like uh, Chuba Hubbard or something that we can kind of throw in there and add talent to that room. Um, just valuing the right tackle a little bit higher to me than the running back but this guy is the truth and the air and on the ground um three down running back he's talented i love him home run hitter let's go who's next brandon yeah i'll go um brian i concur i'm going with gainwell too you you know what i'm saying um do we need a cornerback Yes, we do. But also, you know, just like what we were talking about before the show aired, you know, um, there's going to be moves in free agency um, because free agency is still on after the draft to address certain things that were not able to be uh, uh, addressed in the draft. Um, I think Gainwell at this position is too explosive to not have. We do not have an explosive team. And like I keep saying, protect your investment. Okay. And how do you protect your investment? Offensive linemen and also players that offer dump passes in the flats, like your outlets, you know, and gain well, as we've seen, running the ball, catching the ball, you know. Um, I think he is just fantastic, and he can be another weapon for Zach Wilson. Imagine Zach with that pure ball, that pure touch, throwing it to a pure running back with a pure offensive line. You know, and then the, the 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 free agent wide receivers that we've already acquired. Um, and, I and, and Tony, we just picked up, dude. Don't, don't I don't want that, Tony. Dude. Don't forget that, dude. I, I, but we that, listen, listen. He's in your pocket already, baby. He's in you my pocket. I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna throw him out there. He's gonna do something. He's gonna end up 
replacing Crowder after we don't want his contract the following year. So I'm cool with that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, Gainwell, oh, um, running back out of Memphis. I'm going with him. <laughs> Who's next? I'll go. All right. I mean, Kenny Gainwell. <laughs> it's not much I need to say. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll defer my time to Coach Kyle. Let's do it. Let's try to catch up to ourselves. We fell behind. Let's go. Yeah. Kenny Gainwell. I wow. Just I just crossed out the six and put an eight. So it goes from six. <laughs> yeah, they did. When you said that, reasons, that's what you were going to do. All the reasons that you guys said and all the reasons that we said before, wonderful that, that this guy falls to us at this pick. Higher value pick than any of the corners still on the board. Agree with Brandon that, um, you know, I think that Bryce Hall is a starter. I think that Bless Austin is the guy that we may need to upgrade from. Although he has started games, um, we can um, we can possibly get a Richard Sherman or uh, another corner in, in free agency. Um, I'm hoping that some of the salad ties uh, help with that. But yeah, Kenny Gainwell here. I think that after we put this pick in, now that we're all in consensus, we should just take a look at, back at what we've done so far. So that um, to huh. kind of review, um, but going back to the draft, we are going to select with our 86th pick. Kenneth. Gainwell. Kenneth Gainwell. Yes. Good I'm going to pause the draft for, a, draft for a second. So, so far with our second pick, we picked Zach Wilson out of BYU. 23rd pick. Elijah Vera Tucker, a.k.a. AVT, um, offensive guard slash tackle out of USC. With the 34th pick, Kadarius Toney, um, absolute weapon. You could call him a wide receiver, but um, if you think about what he did on that team with Kyle Pitts on it right, um, and all the accolades that Kyle Pitts has gotten, I, I, I believe that this guy was overshadowed a little bit and um, – and a, and a serious weapon. Then Liam Eichenberg, 66, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. Um, I think that we Eric have – Tony did have 70 receptions on a shortened season as well. I mean, he's a he's, he's a player, definitely. Yeah. Um, just oh, besides – there, But, yeah. He also, he also lined up at running back and ran reverses also. Yeah, he's um, a weapon. Yeah. I mean, some people call that a gadget, but I think he's like a – he's like a Tyreek Hill um, – Type of type of thing or Debo Samuel. He reminds um, me of Percy Harvin. Yeah, who was on our team for a minute. Yeah. Um, the uh, I think that with uh, picks two twenty three thirty four and sixty six, um, even with eighty six, we have five potential starters there. Um, <laughs> I'm about to pick another starter at one oh seven. How about that? So so the only thing, the only thing with with Eichenberg at sixty six. As far as starting, I, I don't really buy the, the narrative of, of bumping Fant down to guard. I've never heard that even mentioned. Me neither. Um, That's by fair. anybody. Um, and I think if you keep putting Fant in different positions, I don't think that's that that's the best thing for us. However, um, Fant can be a swing tackle. Right. And play left and right tackle to, to spell these guys. Or – in like one of those big ogre things where you bring in an extra lineman. Yeah, that's um, totally fair. Totally fair. And, yeah, and, so, and it, it gives you depth, which sure. again, which I've I've preached from day one, what we did not have prior to this year um, was the depth. Mm -hmm. And the injuries on an offensive line kill your season. Absolutely. Totally agree. The guy you bumped out of the guard probably is Adoba. The, the other right tackle that right. I, don't, I don't I don't like him yet. I think he needs to go to guard as well. Yeah. But uh, so, let, let's move on, guys. Let's try to catch up to ourselves. We have ten picks in total. We've only gotten five. All right, Brevin Jordan goes eighty nine to the to the Browns. Um, Dylan Moses, another guy, Tyon Wallace. I like Tylen Wallace. Trill I Williams. do like Tylen Wallace too. Yeah. Throw Williams to the Cowboys. A Debo. Is gone I as love well. Cameron McGrone too. He's okay, a linebacker. All right, so now we have Chaz Surratt, linebacker, at the top of the PFN board. Um, 
gonna go down a little bit here. Can you click defense, Kyle? Just just the header sure. of defense. Is is that what everybody's feeling right now? That we've got enough offense that we're really looking at at adding um potential defensive players here? I mean, you know, potentially. I mean, everybody's not gonna give away they they pick, but uh, I'm mean, at, at least gonna look. I, I'd say this. I love the fact that we went offense the first five picks of this draft. You know, I, I don't remember the last time we've done that and focused on offensive line and playmakers. I mean, it, you know, so it, it feels really for refreshing. I would love for our draft to turn out this way. So I wouldn't be mad at it, even though, you know, I would have picked a cornerback. Um, not married to it, you know, just how the draft fell. But, you know, and, and as far as how it fell in this particular instance, I would going with the cornerback, but I'm not mad at this draft. Well, I think I think this, I think this draft is offensive heavy anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we have to think that way because our offense stunk. Well, our whole team stunk, but you got to protect the quarterback, man. You got to. Uh, All right. My, my pick is in. Okay. So well, go, go to the back to the top. Then. This Hufanga. Yeah, I have him is, on my he is he is I believe in some in some circles the second best um, safety or third Richie Grant being the second. Um, you know we did draft we should have drafted Chin last year, um, but we drafted uh, Ashton Davis. So um, and we also we signed a safety. Yes, um, out of St. Louis. No, out of from the Rams, I think. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Yeah, he, he's pretty good. He's all right. He's small, though. He's like five. Do you have him on the depth chart, Kerry? Uh, the free safety? I believe he's a – I believe he's a strong. Uh, I don't even think that's – Joiner? Yes. Joiner, yes. Joiner. I don't think there's a such thing as a free safety and a strong safety anymore, really, in the league. Um, this is just my personal opinion. Based on what I, I think, I think there is in terms of you know system wise, May was playing that that strong safety position up 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 on the line of scrimmage, but definitely did not. That was really not the position from him. He's more of a, of a free range guy. So I just think that's why you don't really see the differentiation anymore between a strong safety. Like when we played football at Baldwin, um, you know, it was, or at least when we played, I don't know about with Kerry, we, we had a, we had a strong safety and we had a free safety. And th those were two different positions. That strong safety was more like a Rover um, in a four, four. Um, I just don't think the NFL is like that because you're playing so much nickel. Um, you take that strong safety out and you put that Brian Poole um, buster screen type in there to to be your extra your extra D back rather than have a that thumper. Um, well, sometimes they have that strong safety, right? Actually playing more of a linebacker position too. Right, he's more of a will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, All right, so um, let's keep this going, guys. Yeah. Uh, where? Are all your picks in, respectively? Hold on. Okay. Oh, Kyle, sitting on Kyle. Um, I think it's back up to me to be the. Um, are you the tiebreaker? Yeah, I'm the tiebreaker. You can go first. Come full circle. What pick number is this? One hundred seven. One hundred seven. All right. All righty. Who wants to go first? I thought, I thought you go first since you're the uh, tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah, you're the tiebreaker. You go first. Yeah, you're right, brother. The screen share is off, right? Yep. It is. All right, guys. So with the uh, 107th pick, and that is what? The fourth round, right? Yep. Beginning of the fourth yep. round. Beginning of the fourth round, 107th pick. I'm going to go with a position that we have not addressed yet that I tried to address before. I'm going to go with the cornerback, Ambry Thomas out of Michigan. Ambry Thomas was ranked um, before, uh, I believe, before he um, opted out of this season as a top 45 pick kind of a guy. He's a really good cornerback, um, can play any system, 
and was really lauded over there at Michigan for his cornerback play, but he opted out of this season. Um, since we're picking in the fourth round, I'm going to take a chance on this kid. I think he's better than the other cornerback um, options before him that are ranked according uh, uh, to, to, to PFN even higher than him. I think he's got way more upside. And they're thinking that he could potentially come in and start by maybe even midway through this season of his rookie year. And we need cornerback help. And then, you know, if we were to sign Richard Sherman, he can coach him up as well into our system. I'm going with Ambry Thomas, cornerback out of Michigan. You got dimensions on Ambry Thomas? What are his height? What's his height and weight? Uh, offhand, no, but I can look that up real quick as the next person goes. I'll go. I'm picking uh, Chaz Surratt. Linebacker UNC, um, he's a uh, a converted wide receiver um, to uh, to linebacker. Uh, has his, his brothers p- plays at Wake Forest as well. Um, very athletic um, and uh, can do a, a number of things, kind of like a, a you know in, in a Jamal Adams type of mold. Um, whereas he's a little undersized, but um, but very, very active. Um, I like, I like where this pick is for him too. Um, I really loved Zayvon Collins and all the things that Zayvon Collins could do. Um, but Zayvon Collins is a much bigger, um, guy than, than Surratt, I believe, um, maybe about 20 pounds bigger. Um, so, uh, you're getting a little bit of a, a Zayvon Collins light here and, and somebody who's has a lot of growth potential. Um, at a position that we need to add depth to. I don't think he comes in and starts, but uh, I do think he adds depth and would be a, you know, a special team or in at 107, um, you know, unless, unless there was a, 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 a different approach that we took in the, in the beginning, whereas we already picked two offensive linemen. I don't want to go offensive line here um, and uh, I want to build some depth. So I'm going Chaz Surratt, UNC linebacker. Just to go back to uh, Ambry Thomas, he's six foot, 190 pounds. So those are his dimensions. I'm going to look up his 40 time right now, but the write-up on him is Thomas was well on his way to becoming a top 45 pick off of the 2019 film before choosing to opt out last season. He had his moments during this senior bowl this year and comes with outstanding size and athleticism as well as upside. So they think that he'll start off as a nickel, and then develop into a starter. We don't have a nickel on our team signed just yet as far as a quality nickel. Um, and uh, I like him. But anyway, go ahead. You want to go or you want yeah, me? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. So my pick at 107 is the safety that um, Coach uh, mentioned, Talanoa Hufanga from USC. His stat line for his career is – 141 tackles, including 11 for losses, three and a half sacks, plus seven de- deflections, and seven forced fumbles in his career at USC. Um, we, the way this this NFL is going is that is you, you need to have as many pass defenders on the field as possible that can be versatile and also defend the run. Um, this guy gets in the backfield. This guy makes deflections. He can cover in um, pass coverage. Uh, and, you know, I think we need to improve the depth that we have at both free safety and strong safety. And it looks like this guy can play both positions at a, at a high level. Um, I'm not convinced about the cornerbacks at this, at 107, at picking at 107. Um, but I think this guy is a safety in this draft that is, uh, which is not really a high, high, uh, uh, um, you know, position as far as value in this particular draft. But I think this guy offers value uh, at the safety position as far as what we need in, in our defensive backfield. And I'd say one last thing because I was looking up the 40 time. Um, so for cornerbacks, Eric Stokes ran the fastest one, 429. The second fastest one, 437, was Ambry Thomas. And then the third one after that was JC Horn. It was a tie, actually, tied for second, 
4.37. J.C. Horn ran a 4.37. So he ties Ambry Thomas in the 40. Okay. All right. Well, uh, looks like it's my turn, and I, this is as far from a consensus as we can be at this juncture, uh, but that's where it gets later on in the draft, right? So for me, it's Quincy Roche. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Probably Roach. <laughs> right? Um, so that's my guy. I don't hear you nah in the background, dude. I don't, I don't, like I don't, I don't need that. Uh, but it's all good. Um, I, you know, listen, I, I think at, at, at this juncture, um, reaching for a cornerback, I think there are some better cornerbacks that are rated, um, you know, later on in the draft per se. I just don't want to, just because we need one at this point, um, draft one PFN has them, you know, right there, I guess, uh, as far as Quincy is concerned, 13 sacks in 2019, four and a half in 2020. So obviously we got to dig into that a little bit, but he also transferred from temple to Miami at that point in time. So maybe there's something there, but um, you know, I think there's some value in selecting him at that point or at this point in the draft. Uh, he is, and I had it up there. Um, 81.7 was his grade in 2020. Um, 40th as far as edges. Uh, and, um, and what you know, kind of system was it? A three, four system or four, three? Kyle probably knows four, more about the Miami four. system than I do, so I'll kind of defer four, to eight. him. You, do you know what what system? Miami, my, Miami rolls with a four man line. Four man line, yeah. And you got you got to remember too, like you got four DNs: Roche, Rousseau, Phillips. Yep. And then there's one other guy. I think I can't remember the name right now, or maybe it's. Three. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no, no. There's three, three. You got three DNs from from Miami that are all quite good, but all played at different times. And then you got Phillips that had the injury history, right. Rousseau that opted out, and then you got Roche that's not as good as either, of them, um, you know, numbers wise or you know, and and like you said, he went from Temple to Miami. down to um, down to Miami. Yep. So I, I think that. Maybe what we want to do here is um, is pull those those PFF grades for each one of the four that we said, um, so that we have that quantifiable in front of us where they're at as far as you said that he's one hundred seven. I'm sorry. Um, no, he was one sixty eight. So Quincy was one sixty eight with an eighty one grade with an eighty one point seven grade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So grade is 81.7. I mean, if we're looking at both of those numbers, um, I don't recall everybody else's pick, but Chaz Surak. Where Chaz where is Chaz Surak? All right. So Chaz Surak, uh let's see as far as he was a straight linebacker, right? Yeah, the yeah, UNC. And check Ambry Thomas as well. Hey, just slow down, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> Chaz Surratt's on my big board. Like I have Chaz Surratt as my number five. Inside linebacker in this draft. So uh, 101, his grade is a 47.9. So he was 466 out of 511 eligible linebackers. For Surratt? For Surratt, yes. North Carolina, yes? Wow. Yeah, yeah no. absolutely. So that's, that's, that's that, Surratt. That doesn't, hurt. that doesn't help my argument. He's a weapon as a blitzer and plays with an uncoachable recklessness into contact. He's still a project in the run game, though, after switching to linebacker in 2019. Yeah, they're saying that he, le- he needs more reps, you know, to... And he's an interior linebacker. middle... He's an interior linebacker? A middle linebacker? Inside, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's... They, they play a four-man front, too. So... Okay. Oh, okay. He's not a Mike. Okay. What's the name of your guy, uh... Brand? Ambry, A M B R Y Thomas. Cornerback. Cornerback out of Michigan. So while Brian's finding that, this is what a lot of GMs are going to be going through when they're doing this draft. This lack of data. You know, like if we're talking about guys that opt out, the last film on them is 2019 or a little bit of the senior bowl, like Brandon was saying with Ambry Thomas. So and with Kenny. I mean, this is a crapshoot as crapshooty as you get. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing with Gainwell because he opted out. Yeah. So they had him uh, 117 on the big board, but they didn't have a 2019 grade on him. So I'm trying to see if I can find that. 
Okay. Right, give me stand by. Give me two seconds. In the meantime, I'm just reading, you know, the negatives and the positives on Roche. And uh, they're saying he doesn't come with that great a size. He's only like 240-something playing end, 6'2 and a half, 243. Um, struggles getting off of blocks, controlled by a single blocker. He says that he's ineffective in pursuit and doesn't translate his 40 into good football speed either. It doesn't sound like he would be an upgrade over Bryce Huff, in my opinion. Or Curry or any of those guys. And they're saying that he's not that athletic. He's got average athleticism. So, yeah, I'm not. Who did you pick? Hufanga. Hufanga is safety. I think it's the highest rated out of all the ones we talked about. Probably so. So uh looks like Thomas had a grade of 80.8 ahead of 2020. Mm-hmm. So it was a um highest grade Big 10 cornerback. And Ooh. that was a, that was in 2019. 80.8. Got gotcha. you. And yours was a cornerback too? Safety. Safety, Safety. okay. Out of USC. All right. Yeah, we have LaMarcus Joyner um, penciled in as the starter at strong safety with Marcus May at free um, in our new 4-3 with Ashton Davis backing them up and somebody named Saquon Hampton, who I've never heard of. Well, Saquon Hampton is backing up the free safety position or the strong safety? Free safety. So... uh, Fanga rank 172 on the big board, so he's the lowest as far as the rank is concerned, at least at pro, pro football focus. But he was 83.9 was his grade overall, which was seventh in the uh, in college football in 2020, as far as safeties were right. concerned. Seventh out of 494. Might be just the value of safeties in general. I mean that that put him at 172 as far as his position, but. You know, that's kind of where we are with it. Uh, who was the tiebreaker here? It's me. I'm ready. I'm ready to go with Brandon with the Amber Thomas pick as well. Yeah. I don't yeah, have a problem I mean, with it. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. And I I, I was close. I, I just needed to hear those numbers on Kerry's pick because I was like, all right, it makes sense. But we just need a cornerback so bad. And I feel like we got a borderline steal here. So I'm tiebreaking for Ambry Thomas, cornerback out of Michigan. That's a first right. that's a fourth round? Yeah. Where are you, Ambry? There you are. The pick is in. Copy that. There goes Quincy Roche. Oh, there he goes, goes to Tennessee. I like Chat Patrick Surratt. Jones too. I like Patrick Jones. Chad Surratt is gone. Trey Sermon is gone. Tony Fields, not oh, a bad uh, Smith Marset is another guy I like. That's a great place for him to get picked for whoever got him. Who? Um, the, um, the Ryder suit from okay. Iowa. Okay. I don't know too much about him. Me neither. Dalen Hayes, I like him out of Notre Dame, too. And I like uh, uh, Sean Wade fell. Oh, Jalen Darden is a sleeper of mine. Goes to the Texans at 143. That's an absolute steal. Mm. Um, absolute steal, and um, that's going to be big for them. Um, okay, guys. Click. Uh, all right, so hit all because you have it on defense right now, Carl. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Starting to get murky. Yeah. Uh, hit. Could you hit defense cornerback, please, for me? I already got my. Oh. All right. Kyle, can you just click on? Because I think I remember what it said about Keith. Uh, his write up. Keith is cornerback. Keith uh, Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, Keith Taylor. Just click on his his write up. Uh, right. Okay, I remember this. I remember this. And then again, yeah, and, and then I checked them out on, on another site too. Okay, I remember. 
he um, he had a good senior bowl. Um, but on, it doesn't say whether he opted out or not. Right. Like there was a lot of guys from UW that opted out, like Joe Tryon, um, quite a few. Mm-hmm. Uh, Can you go to linebacker too, Kyle? Okay, thank you. Uh, go back to cornerback one more time. Your boy. <laughs> Not at that. Maybe the next. Maybe the next. Yeah, it's definitely the next. Yeesh. All right. Okay. I got to rewrite my card because it's too messy. Who's going first? You. Yeah, I think it's it's your time to go first and be the tiebreaker. Then after that, it's Kerry. Then after that, it's Brian, I think. Time for me to pound on the table for somebody. Okay. I think I'm I think um, I'm pounding with you, Kyle. With the 146th pick, Charles Snowden, linebacker, edge, University of Virginia. Snowden is six foot seven, 200, between 240, 250 pounds of athlete, long, can play the edge, can play in space, um, kind of a, a, a tweener in that he is not necessarily a 3-4 OLB um, and not necessarily a DN, but he's a guy who was seeing his potential start to rise in his junior year, had a great junior year, I think second team all ACC, uh, comes back for senior year, decides not to opt out, breaks his ankle, similar to what Bryce Hall did at Virginia the year before. So he doesn't break his ankle. I think that this guy is a, a high day two pick um, or a uh, or a or low day one pick. Um, he's really coming into his own as a player. Um, this is a guy that I've had my eye on for two years, and I thought he was going to come out last year, decided to stay in, and then he stayed in and didn't opt out this year. So I'm going Charles Snowden, um, big athletic linebacker, um, maybe a little bit of a project, but a guy who – I could see um, really turning out to be something for us, uh, especially at 146 with value. All right. So, uh, Brian, why don't you go next, unless you're busy over there. I see you. Yeah, so um, I'll go next. I'll go next. Uh, I'm going to go with Shakur Brown at 156, who's a cornerback, uh, to be on. Where's he playing out of? What college? Uh, let me go back to it. Um, I believe it was Michigan State. Gotcha. Michigan State. So, you know, for me, I always felt like the value um, was later on in the draft for some of these cornerbacks. Not a lot of them deserved the first or second round grade. And for somebody like Shakur Brown, 5'11", 190, um, as far as PFF says, Brown burst on the scene with a number of awe-inspiring inception, interceptions. 
this past season. He's a playmaker with seven picks on only 79 career targets. You're going to have to take a risk with somebody uh, later on in the draft here, but number 14th ranked cornerback out of 518 in the country in 2020 with a grade of 82.2. So I feel like folks like that ranked 156 as far as PFF is concerned, so not too far off of where we're drafting right now. You're going to have to take on some projects and some folks that you feel like have some potential. Um, as far as scheme fit, I, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you, but I'm, I'm willing to roll the dice on somebody that graded out well. Um, you know, and, um, you know, I think zone, you can, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, be a guy that could play zone and, and do well from that perspective. So Shakur Brown is my guy at this. You point. got a high weight on him. Huh? I think height and weight. 5'11", 190. Yep. And Michigan state, he played in the big 10. So, you know, good competition there. So I'll go. Yeah, uh, go we're ahead, at go 146, ahead. right? Yep. Right. So at 146, I'm picking up uh, Keith Taylor, cornerback, out of Washington. Um, he is a big cornerback, uh, six two, six three. Um, from what I understand, he has ball skills. Again, he's going to be a. I think he's going to be a project, but I think in the in the um, in the scheme in the zone scheme that we ultimately will be running. Uh, you know, I want to pick up somebody here who also can play on special teams, or can be a contributor on special teams. Um, you know, and without knowing a lot about any of the other players at, at, at this, at this uh, pick, you know, I'll go with uh, Keith Taylor. And again, he's, he played for Washington, so he's, he's in the Pac-10. Well, what is it? Is it Pac-12 now? Pac-10. Pac-12 now. Pac-12. <laughs> so um, that's what I'm going with. All right. Cool, man. Um, you guys both make good points as far as Brian and Terry are concerned. Um, I'm going to pound the table with Kyle. I'm going to go for, uh, with the 146 pick, uh, Charles Snowden. Uh, Kyle and I started this conversation regarding Charles, uh, Charles Snowden. Um Maybe two months ago, right, Kyle? In 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 our back and forth in our group yeah. text messaging, as far as um, as far as you know, uh, uh, during our drafts, and Kyle, you really sold me on him. Um, I I went back, I looked at some tape, um, I read up on him, um, and not to diminish what uh, Kerry and Brian and where they're coming from, because I think we do need another cornerback coming out of this draft. But I do have my eye on two other guys that fall a little bit uh, that we can potentially draft. Um, with our 100 and I think it's what 54 uh, that, that we have coming up next or you know we'll see how the draft falls um, but Charles Snowden um, I, 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 I think that you know once he gets in the weight room a little bit a little bit more and I think he's got the ability to be a stand-up edge um, a weak side linebacker or a strong or a, a strong side linebacker or put your hand in the, in the dirt kind of thing with some coaching and a little bit more uh, girth to him, to his frame, I, I think he can be potentially a problem. And then he can also kind of learn that outside position from, you know, um, if he's going to put his hand in the dirt, some of the defensive ends that we've just gotten through free agency, like uh, Vinnie Curry and um, and uh, Lawson from, um, from Cincinnati. And then who knows, he may be thrust into the weak side linebacker position um, you know, in, in this new 4-3 defense, who knows? But uh, I like this kid a lot, and uh, hopefully he's fully healed, just like how our cornerback was healed. And uh, I'm going with him, man. All right. So I think that um, with that said, um, I feel comfortable making this call here. I All just right. got to find him. So to Kyle's a tiebreaker. He's making the call for Charles Snowden. All right. So you, you're drafting him as an edge, not as a linebacker. Just I'm drafting him. I'm drafting him as a as a as a problem. Um, that, <laughs> Imagine that, a problem. Um, that I think that I think that um, Robert Sala will uh, have a lot of a lot of fun with. Kyle's um, calling him a problem. I'm calling him a problem utility because he can be 
positioned in multiple positions. The only place I'm not putting him in is that Mike or inside linebacker. I'm not doing that. I also think that he's one of those – it's one of those picks like Bryce Hall where um, you might be getting an absolute steal at 146. Um, and speaking of steals, uh, Kay Johnson, who uh, the Detroit Lions just picked before our pick at 153, um, really interesting prospect out of uh, South Dakota State, small school receiver. Um, really, uh, really productive. Another one of my wide receiver sleepers, but I'm not going to cry over that because we have Kadarius Tony. So um, I'm, I'm cool with that. All right, uh, let's spin the wheel. You, you got to share, Kyle. All right, hold on. That only took us eight minutes, so let's keep it going. Good job. You. <laughs> The first, the first time we were under? No, the second time. <laughs> but we've only been under twice. All the other times, <laughs> two or three minutes. It's all good. So, so a couple of guys came off the board that I think might have been targets for us. Aaron Banks, another Notre Dame lineman at guard. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about Michael Mennett. Yeah. But Michael Mennett is also a combo. He's a he's a, a center guard. I like um, him, Kyle. I like him. Yeah. Yeah, that's only over the last two weeks that I've gotten to really know who he is and um, and go from there. And I don't know if you guys know about Khalil Herbert, uh, running back out of uh, Virginia Tech. I happen to like him and the Oregon State running back a lot as well. That's why I didn't want to pick up any running backs for me personally until we got to at least the 86 pick. And then, of course, when – when uh, Kenny Gainwell was there, I just couldn't pass him up at 86. There's maybe maybe a little quieter, please. No, but uh, but yeah, you know, look up Khalil Herbert, watch some film on him. He's all right, man. He's he's good. He's good. All okay. Right, so we'll... I think I meant to mute for a second there, um, <laughs> and you did not. And, and we loved not. every minute of it. This yeah. is real what? life, guys. This yeah. is no, this, this is guys, how you roll. This is fake life. Um, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, at this 154th, we still have um, both Shakur Brown and uh, Keith Taylor available. Um, another guy that I know that uh, Brandon liked, Benjamin St. Juiced um, yes. uh, from Minnesota, also there. Um, in the offensive line category, we still have um, – we still have uh, – this guy, Trey Hill, don't know how much you guys know about Trey Hill, but Trey Hill is also a combo center guard um, and actually can play tackle as well. Um, so he's like a, a poor man's uh, Rashad Slater. Um, Did David Moore already um, get drafted from Grambling? I don't hit, think hit, so. hit OG. Uh, what up, OG? I think he did. It looks like it. Oh, dang it! I was with him too, man. How about this at three hundred eight? Pierre Oliver Lestage, offensive guard, Montreal. <laughs> I was about to say, but before you said Montreal, I was like, that dude's Haitian. Funny. Uh, hit hit <laughs> all all Kyle, so we can just uh, let's see. Yeah. Keith Taylor is our number from PFN standpoint is the best player available right now. Um, what, what do you guys know about this cam sample guy from Tulane? I don't know anything about him. I haven't watched any film on him. I don't know anything about him. I've heard the name. Yeah. So, so who's the, the captain of the ship during uh, this run? Is that me? Uh, it's either you or Kerry, I think. Me, yeah, then think it was me. Kyle, and then it was – it's Kerry, then it's UB. Wait, I thought – didn't Kerry uh, call something recently? He called one. Yeah, he only called one. It's his turn. So, I, but I, I – uh, Gainwell was the one that I had, I, and then you came, I think, after that. No? Well, because, because we went full circle, because I went first with it, then it was Kyle. All right. Then I – I think it was Kerry, then it was you. You can go. All right, I mean, whatever. I don't really have a, an opinion. All right. <laughs> All right, let's, 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 let's select somebody and figure it out. Can you, before you do that, can you go to offense and go to running back, please? 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> Look at that evil laugh. <laughs> you want to double up on the RBs, huh? Uh, sounds like it. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. He doesn't believe in Ty Johnson. I love Ty Johnson. Mm. Mm. Let's see. Well, by the way, I did hear good things about that Duke edge, though, guys. Victor. Uh, Oladipo. Yeah, last I was name. Say that. <laughs> Oladipo. You know? KJ. Dem- Demu KJ. Yeah. I get PTSD when I ever think about um, drafting anybody named Golston. I know. Yeah. Even though he, you know he, he's supposed to be a steal too. Got some guys down here, man. They got some guys down here. All right, let's, let's talk Stop about your guy. guy. I got my guys. All right. So does that mean Kerry is going first? Yes. Oh, I'm. I'm That's what it means. The, um, I'm doing the tiebreaker. That's fine. Yes. Or, or whoever's doing the tiebreaker goes first. You can do tiebreaker. Yeah. All right. So um. Yeah, I'm going to go back at it. Another yeah. round of Shakira Brown. Let's go. I mean, you know, we we, we talked about him already. Um, I think he'd be a good fit. We need some depth at cornerback. Um, somebody with some talent out there uh, to challenge the folks, the young pups we already have out there. And so I think Shakira Brown would be somebody that uh, we could do at this slot. Okay. Yep. All right. Who's next? I'll go next. All right. Um, at at number one fifty four, uh, I go Chuba Hubbard. Uh, I want to change the pace back. Wow! Wait, wait. Let's slow that down. <laughs> wow! Yeah. yeah. I want I want to change the pace back. I didn't get it last year like I wanted. Um, and I think you need somebody who's going to run in between the tackles and punish you. Um. Even even with Gainwell, and I don't really look Gainwell at Gainwell is not a is not a guy that's going to punish you in between the tackles, uh, in between in, even in between the guards, you know, at times. Um, he weighs a buck ninety five. Right, but but from the from my perspective, I think you, you're gonna you, what you do is you change the level of sight for a defense, keeping them on their on their toes and on their heels when you don't do the same thing consistently. When you change their eye level, uh, sort of like a boxer, you hit him in the top, you hit him in the, in the gut, yeah. you hit him from the right, you hit him from the left. We need somebody that has a change of pace back, and we don't have anybody on our roster that does that. Chubba Hubbard carried the ball 558 times in two and a half years at um, Oklahoma State, and he goes – he runs forward. You're not knocking him back. I want that guy on my roster. I like him. I, I just forget his measurables. Like, how tall is he? In, 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 six uh, six foot two oh eight. All right. Six foot two oh eight. So you know, um, as far as size compared to um, Gainwell, who we're trying, who we already drafted or whatever else. I mean, I, you know, listen, it, it's uh, I, I totally out of left field, but I, I kind of like it. I, I like him. He's a home run hitter too. Right, so so let's be clear. I mean, you know, he's gonna he's gonna hit the hole, and then he, he can take it to the house right. as well. So, um, you know, I I don't dislike it. Well, let's see what everybody else says. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll go. I'll go. Um, with the one hundred and fifty fourth pick in the draft, uh, I'm going to go with Derek Barnes, linebacker out of Purdue. You can look at his game film. The guy's a beast. I look at him um, the same way that I look at uh, a, a linebacker that I happen to like a lot, McGrone, um, out of Michigan. Um, Derek Barnes, um, he is a thumper. He uh, plays with all heart. Um, he just, uh, he, he's, if you look at his tape, he, he, he's all over the field. Um, he's only about six foot or six foot one. Um, but he knows the game of football. And um, the thing is, after this season, I think Joe Douglas is going to try to get rid of Mosley. And then where does that leave us as far as linebackers? You know, he wants to get rid of that contract that uh, we overpaid for. And for a guy that hasn't played in two years, basically, 
that leaves us with the linebacker out of Minnesota. I forget his name. Um, and then we have um, uh, uh, Davis uh, that we got from the Lions, who is a question. Blake Cashman, window. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Blake Cashman who you love. We, um, we also have Patrick Oanifer, who didn't play right. last year. And, and uh, yeah, so uh, Cashman. Um, and then also, uh, what is it, uh, J- uh, Jabbar Davis um, from Detroit that we got, who I happen to like, but there's still a question mark for him. So we need to start filling up the linebacker room as well. Um, and uh, Derek Barnes is a inside to middle linebacker type. And if you look at, if you look at his game film and you look at his write-up, it's nothing but positives. And um, I think we need to start thinking ahead in regards to that instead of waiting. Um, but uh, I do like where Brian's coming from, is, from his cornerback position. But, you know, um, I think we need to start thinking about linebackers, um, not just the edge, but in the middle as well, because we have not addressed that in free agency uh, to my satisfaction and in our particular mock draft. Yeah, I mean, right. we're, we're talking need. I mean, clearly cornerback is higher than linebacker, but, you know, and we already drafted one. But that's just my opinion, whatever. I got you. <laughs> Kyle, go ahead. Go ahead, Kyle. So, so I think that in terms of needs, we've already drafted one at each of our highest needs. Um, I think tight end is another minor league need that we have that we have not addressed yet. But I, but there's a guy I like that I think will be available with the next pick. Um, so if I'm gonna if I'm gonna double or triple up on something it's going to be to, to bring depth to it whereas i like brian's where brian's head is at with the with the corner pick i'm going to go with with trey hill offensive uh guard center combo out of uga i think that this is a steal at um at at, at this length especially for the the versatility that we've been talking about you know if we can have three guys that we can put in at center um or guard um and then potentially with, with cam clark's development um we uh we're we're really cooking um and i see the value a little bit higher than than potentially the, the corner at this point um however i could be swayed uh to brian's point of view i think uh whereas i also like barnes as that day three steal as he is described in his PFN uh, write-up, uh, Brandon, I like that too. Um, Kerry, who was your pick again? Uh, Chubba no. Hubbard. Chubba Hubbard. Uh, I don't want to go running back here. Uh, I like Chubba Hubbard, but I think the Gainwell pick, um, I think the Gainwell pick was was enough there. Um, I don't know if Shakur Brown returns kicks at all. But I think that um, that's another thing we should be talking about in this late stage. Um, and but uh, but I think we also took care of that with Kadarius Tony, who is going to be a, a punt returner and a kick returner for right. us. So Braxton Barrios, um, thank you for your time here. Um, you can you can go um, and wherever Adam Gase went, you know, because that's you and Adam Gase are like this. Um, or maybe you go back to New England. But the uh, I think I think that I like the adding to the offensive line depth here, especially on that interior. So I'm gonna go Trey Hill, but I'm ready to be swayed uh, because this is a late round pick. I'm not pounding on the table for Trey. Hill. Breaking the tie again. I already forgot. That's Carrie. Carrie is. Carry Brian, is. You went first. Oh yeah, Brian did go first. So yeah, it's you. You break the tie. Mm-hmm. Um. Wow. Um. I think uh, you know Kyle makes some compelling arguments for a center. Um, right now, what's he, his rank? Uh, he's in the two hundreds. Hold on. So um, he's in, he's one seventy one on PFN, uh, right. but that's as a center. He's not just a center. He's he can play guard too. Uh, let's see. Barnes is one eighty eight on PFN. Uh, they have him at two sixty eight. So that's like undrafted free agent. Um, although uh, Tra- Trey Hill, sorry, Trey Hill, Trey Hill. So, um, buddy, he graded out as a seventy-six point two. So the fourteenth ranked center. 
um, as well. Um, Can you look into Derek Barnes? Yeah, Sorry. Derek Barnes. Uh, I wrote it down. He his score was fifty seven point seven. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as his grade last year, um, but they had him ranked in like the mid one hundreds, I believe. But I'll I'll just double check here. Uh, as far as linebackers, what what uh school was he with again? Purdue. Purdue, the Boilermakers. Um, one thirty one was his rank, but season was at fifty seven point seven. He was the three hundred and fifty ninth linebacker out of five eleven. Wow. Yeah. So you know, not 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 great scores there. So really, Derek Barnes, I you know linebacker don't really think think it's as um big a need especially because we addressed it somewhat uh already um chua hubbard um is intriguing uh to me can, can i just give my argument against chuba hubbard Go ahead. it's not necessarily against the player itself it's that we already have gained well i love ty johnson we have uh perrine um, and then we also have Josh, uh, Josh Adams. Um, so it's going to be a glut of running backs in our system. And I don't want to get rid of Ty Johnson. We already have Gainwell and we have Perrine that could be our third down and or goal line type of back, because I think he's the biggest out of all. Actually, I, I would put Ty Johnson as our goal line back, but either way, him or Perrine. So I, I think we have already addressed the issue. Um, whereas we have so much other need, I don't think Chaba is necessarily needed. But I do respect the player. I think he's, you know, a good player. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, hey, if this is my pick, I'm going with Shakur Brown. Lock it in. All right. All right. All right I just want to say one thing about um, Trey Hill, maybe for later, is that Trey Hill started four games at guard for Georgia. Um he was the fourth best guard prospect coming out of high school before he moved to center as well. So this guy is a true combo. Um, he's not a he's not a, a potential combo. He's a true combo who's, who's played um, at a high level at both positions. But um, but you are the tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah and, 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 too. and I'll and I'll say just you know listen, Shaquille Brown ended up his first team All Big Ten. You know, last year as well. So um, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not mad at it either. Not mad. You know, just dressing a need, and I think um, you know his uh, position warranted it as well. So we're let's going go. Two, we're going Tupac Shakur Brown <laughs> at one at one fifty four. Who knows? Barnes is still on the board. Bonds. Bonds. Kill Bonds is Bonds. Yeah. Anybody know what that's from? Isn't that the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? No, that's Platoon. Oh, we have Barnes Platoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chubba win 168. Derek Barnes to the Packers. Uh, they're saying Barnes is one of the most underrated linebackers in the draft and is a forceful run defender. Ooh, Trey Hill's gone. In zone coverage. He'll be a day three steal and offers scheme versatility as well as starting potential at the next level. Okay. Oh my bad, my bad. Did I step on you, Brandon? Or you were done? No, no, good. I'm. I was just reading uh, Barnes' stuff to you guys, but we've moved on. Let's let's keep carrying on. Can, well, can, this is can you tell us who we drafted so far, Kyle? Could you just click on the the logo? Sure. Great draft so far, fellas. I'm oh, really yeah. happy with this. Uh, oh yeah, I like it. I'm I'm at. Uh, all right. So we're at we're in the sixth round. We have two six round draft picks. Um, one early which is ours, and we have uh, Carolinas as well. All right. Can I um, can I go first here? I mean, I'm uh, first. No. I haven't, I haven't first. First. Kerry goes first, Kerry. and he's, he's right. the captain of the yeah. ship. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kerry. Don't worry, Kyle. I know where you're going, and I, I got you. you because I'm you've seen some of my other mocks. I think you've seen <laughs> some of my other mocks. <laughs> I'm on the same page with you. We'll see. We'll see. I hear my baby upstairs. Mwah. Yeah, I hear my boys. I'm not kissing anything. 
So uh, Vivian, she she does this thing where she's like, Mwah. so that's her thing. Okay. So I yeah. mimic her. Yeah, yeah. Lenny does that too. Just yeah, not right yeah. now. All I hear is, yeah. is Austin. <laughs> We gotta get these guys together, B. Oh, absolutely, man. Oh, the pandemic, that, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good, though. We'll get it done. All right, tell him to give Uncle B a good hug. Make sure you spray some good cologne on him. Man him up. Be like this now. You need to spray some cologne on yourself, bro. I got so, the best. <laughs> am, I, am I going first? You uh, are. Yeah. You are going first. Let me let me get this timer going. You ready, Kerry? Yes, sir. Is everybody sir. ready to go? Yes, sir. So I'm going at tight end uh, at 186. Nick uh-huh. Nick Eubanks from Michigan. All right. Bob I, Eubanks' uh, nephew. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> um, you know, at the, at the tight end position, we have Herndon, who I, you know, wanted. Uh, Croft and, and, and Wesco. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to strengthen the uh, tight end room a bit. Uh, he played at Michigan. Look, uh, he has looks like he has the versatility to be an inline blocker as well as a pass catching tight end. Um, I think we can have success with a double tight end package uh, at times. Um, you know, I, without knowing or understanding any of the any, any of the other players that are on, that are uh, available to us i think i haven't fallen in love with anybody at 186 or below but i think this is a smart choice um picking at picking the tight end position um with nick eubanks from michigan all right um, you wanted to go first but uh you can uh, bring it in with uh, the second position why don't you go ahead Nick Eubanks, tight end, University oh, of Michigan. Oh, surprise. Wow. So, wow. Wow. so to echo what Kerry's saying, um, you know, I I really was hoping that Tommy Tremble would fall. Not this um, far. Not because day. Tommy Tremble is the most George Kittle like in this draft, in my opinion. Wasn't used as uh-huh. much. Wasn't used as much though. Well. He they, they did a lot of three tight end right sets at Notre Dame mm-hmm. and he was the fullback. He was a tight end in this bunch set that they did that I really loved. Um and they had some younger tight ends that were also pretty good at Notre Dame. But Tommy Tremble blocks. And you see some high some college highlights of Tommy Tremble that looked like the pro highlights of Kittle. Like I've seen Kittle block people out of the stadium. Um, you know, and, he, and he, he's got that type of that type of thing going. And um, San Francisco was great with Kittle uh, st- and, and still is um, with Eubanks. What I see is a little bit of Brevin Jordan and a little bit of Tommy Tremble. And um, he's a guy that plays like a receiver. He runs receiver routes, wheels, um, you know, uh, smash routes, corner routes. Um, really good off the play action, the slice blocking that that we will be doing, you know, like with the inside zone game. So I think he fits he's a good scheme fit. Um, we're picking him right where he where he's valued. So to me, if you're picking a guy where he's supposed to go and you feel like he has upside potential, then that's a, a potential steal for you. I think Wesco was a gase guy. Um, and a McCagan guy. I think Wesco is is done with the Jets. I don't think that. Uh, I think with the signing of Croft, Croft is an upgrade over Wesco. You bring this guy Eubanks in. He's your third guy. Um, and you know we see what Herndon will be this year because Herndon's gone next year if he doesn't do it this year. So I believe that this is his last option. Um, correct. So yes, that is where I'm going. Brian, Great to think alike, Kerry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I have a rebuttal. Uh, so Eubanks, uh, 57.5 was his grade last year. Um, I feel like we don't know what we have in that tight end room because Gase was the uh, coach at the time. 
And, um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, there, there, there's some things that we've got bodies in that room. I'm not really in a rush to throw another body at it at this point in time, especially this late in the draft. Um, just my opinion. But what I'm willing to do is super need is kicker, place kicker, six round at the top of mm -hmm. this round to go um, Evan McPherson out of Florida, Florida Gators. And, you know, <laughs> it was definitely a Achilles heel for us last year and not being able to, um, you know, just just kick, man, that, that kicker. We went through, what, like three kickers last year? <laughs> we were, yeah. like, kind of all over the place, man. And I thought it, it lost us games, quite frankly. So we need somebody who's reliable to bring in. We drafted a punter last year. I think he turned out pretty darn good, right? And I think um, bringing Brendan in, Mann. huh? Brendan Mann, exactly. And I think, and I think we universally kind of panned the guy a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, bring a kicker, but you know, he almost made the Pro Bowl, right? He, he was kind of, you know, in, in the running for that. And this guy made, you know, from fifty yards, one, two, four, four kicks last year from fifty plus. You know, and the years prior, although. Last year, he was about 77% of his field goals. The years prior, he was about 90% from that perspective. So he was very reliable in the last couple of years. And he could kick it from distance. So when you think about the top of the sixth round, why not go for something that is fully need, but somebody that is, is worth it at this juncture? And I'm going this guy, McPherson. All right. So uh, bat and cleanup will be me. And Brian, um, I'm 100% with you. With pick number 186 in the draft, I'm going with Evan McPherson as well. I think it supplies a huge need for the New York Jets. Um, and when you're picking all the way down at 186 and you can get the best person at that respective position, right? you know, I mean, he is the, they say that he is hands down the best kicker in the draft. So you go all the way down there and you get the best at something, you grab it. And it's, it's such a high need for us. And we've, like what you said, Brian, we've lost games as a result of special teams play. This basically shores things up. And then we all already have a punter that was, you know, being considered for a Pro Bowl. So maybe this year he could be a borderline Pro Bowler. It just shores things up so that now we can just really focus on the offensive and the defensive uh, ends of the game while just feeling a lot better about the punting and kicking. So uh, I'm going with Evan McPherson, the best kicker on the college level. And, and, and since this guy is the captain, I'm looking at him. Look at his face right now. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's like, you guys made a compelling yeah. argument. Uh, that's Kerry. Kerry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so looking at it, think Justin Tucker. All right. Just just let that marinate in your little uh, in your, your brain over there, man. You know what I'm saying? And your little the wire you on the wire brain you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean we <laughs> our our season our season last year was so frustrating. Sure, so frustrating. Sure, but one of the biggest frustrations was the kicking game. Sure, and um, our lack of having even a consistent kicker on the roster that we could rely on. Um, to be available and how deflating was to that that available. we we were we were tough it, it was it was tough to even score so to get down where we right. got down and then to have the kickers just shank it right it's just ridiculous and i and i anticipate that all of we'll, our text messages too regarding that it was ridiculous we did. Yeah, yeah. and we and i'm anticipating that we're gonna have games that are gonna be decided because our defense is gonna keep us in games right it's gonna be decided uh on a field goal mm -hmm. winning it tying it or losing it sure so you know i'm convinced nick's on nick eubanks and it's a go for the kicker yeah that's what i'm talking <laughs> about yeah yeah here we go and you you got you guys had talked me into it too so it's really all right, right. All right. Four out of um, the only the, the only the only retort i'd say to that is that you know i don't know where um Barales or McPherson or any of these other kickers compare to even like the free agents realistically that are available right now or even Sam Ficken who was I think the best one of the best kickers in his 
draft class as well. So, you know, just because this guy is the best at his position, arguably, um, in the draft doesn't mean that he's going to be our answer. Um, I hope he is. Um, and I think it's worth a shot here um, because I don't think he'll be available at 226. No, he won't. So, yeah, he won't. Agreed. agreed. All right, let's make the pick. This is our martini pick. This is our last pick. Uh, if I had ice left, it would jingle. <laughs> <laughs> you said Barnes is gone. He got picked up already, right? Yeah, he did. All those All right. Weeb. Huh? See you later, Weeb, you banks. Say juiced. Weeb, weeb, stupid. Weeb, weeb. Weeb? I thought it was weeb. <laughs> you never saw that? Huh? No. The TikTok, weeb, weeb. This dude that's walking up to people acting like he's going to fight him and he like weaves back. And then hey, they hit, hit the all button. <laughs> weave, weave. There you go. 226. To 226. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay. I got my guy already. Is that Richard Roundtree, son? <laughs> <laughs> His his real first name is Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Middle name Richard. Puka's out here, Puka. and that's not Roundtree. That's Roundtree. Right, I know. <laughs> nah, that's Shade Tree, son. It's his nephew. I mean, couldn't afford the D, huh? Marvin Jones' nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Dak Milan, he's the one catching all of uh, Zach Wilson's throws. Yes, he is too. Put it, um, put it, put it back to all, please, real quick. Mm. Wow. I okay, I know I'm doing. Right. I don't even know. I know I'm doing. Yes, it. About this heavy sharpie style, right? Yeah, now. me. <laughs> <laughs> you hear all that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. Yeah, that's right, Daddy. <laughs> you guys pick Malcolm Kuntz a bunch in your yeah, mocks. Can did. somebody talk to me about Malcolm Kuntz? I'm sure Brandon will. You just, just, just wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Just, just wait for it. Does somebody want to go? Somebody want to go? Uh, who's got uh, the tiebreaker? Who's got uh, the tiebreaker? Got, tie got a little echo. Uh, who went last with the tiebreaker? That was Kerry. I think it was Brian, right? Me. me. I went. Kerry. Kerry did. Yeah. I picked the kicker. Okay. I think I think it's back to either me or Kyle. It is back to either one of you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, Brandon, you. I, I you think take I it. think it's back. To me. Yeah, that's fine. All go right. ahead. Yeah, all good, all good. Um, so I'll go first. So you asked about the Kuntz thing. Um, Kuntz is an edge rusher from the University of Buffalo. Um, and behind the scenes, I heard that he's an explosive edge. Um, he is also, in the lesser degree, kind of like uh, the other edge that came out of Buffalo. What's his name? Oh, um, it's in Chicago. Mac. Khalil Mack, yeah, Mack. Mack. You know, like a like a lower end Khalil Mack. You know, coming out of the same system. You know, um, that's what I'm hearing. But however, um, I know that I've picked him in our mocks, but I'm not going to pick him in this mock. Uh, in this mock, um, it does say here, Koontz is a bit of a hidden gem. Um, if you can put that back up again, Kyle, I'll just read it. Um, Koontz is a Bit of a hidden gem as an edge rusher. He plays bigger than he's listed size and faster than his time speed. He can be used standing over tackle or occasionally out of the three-point stance. And Koontz will make an NFL roster if properly used. I get it. I understand that. That's fine. But um, I think that we have been um, – I think we're okay on the edge now with the free agent moves, um, at least right now. But uh, we haven't talked about this at all. But I'm going to go with this pick right here.
pick number 226. I'm going with – Kyle, if you can just uh, kill that screen. Um, no problem. Pick number 226. I'm going with Ben Mason, fullback, out of Michigan. And let me explain why I'm picking Ben Mason. Ben Mason is a bone crusher of a fullback while also being highly athletic as well as an excellent catcher. Um, uh, not catcher, but receiver. You know, he, he, he catches balls out of the backfield. Um, and he's been known to just completely blow people up and like square up against them and just blast them away. And I love that, you know. Um, also, if we're going to inherit the San Francisco style offense, then why not get someone who is athletically gifted, who can block and who can also catch, just like the pro bowler that San Francisco had in um, Kyle, I can't even pronounce his name. Juice check. Uh, yes, oh, juice check. check. Yeah. Exactly. So let's try to mimic that somewhat in this, uh, in this zone scheme system that makes it easier on the quarterback to execute, easier on the lineman to execute, easier on the tight ends to execute, and easy for the running back one cut and go with a lead back in front of them, blasting people and clearing out and, and just clearing out the club, you know? So that's why I'm picking him. And um, one of the few teams that still uses the uh, fullback is, is the 49ers. And I feel like um, I'm an old school guy in that regard. I still like using a fullback as well, especially in the right scheme, which is what we're inheriting with um, a Shanahan type of offense. So Ben Mason, fullback, Michigan. Pick number 226. Intriguing. I hope I'm able to sell you guys on that. Who's going Who's going next? Uh, Kyle. I'll go, I'll go last. Go? All right, bet. Kyle, why don't you go? I'm going Ben Mason, fullback, Michigan. <laughs> um, and and uh, because you just totally told me about somebody that I didn't know about, and then I just looked him up. He's a team captain. So he fits the Joe Character Douglas profile. Guy. Mm-hmm. Character yeah. guy. 6'2", 260. Good Lord. Yeah. Um, and he can catch. He, start, he started a game at D-tackle. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I can't find give it. this guy a face tattoo, and that's the only thing that would make him better for me. Um, <laughs> you know, like, or like he looks like Aquaman or something like that. Right. He played a um, defensive tackle, right? You did mention that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that you brought this to the table, Brandon, because um, because it, it's 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 a it's a, a great scheme fit. And um, and it, it's, you know, it's a little out of left field, but but a great scheme fit. And I think that um, you want to add a guy like this doesn't sound like he has the the pass catching ability or the running ability of a, a Kyle use But at the same yeah. time. You have to um, you have to give people opportunities to see if they're actually going to to catch the ball. Right? Uh, did, did Kyle Uzcheck have the passing ability of Kyle Uzcheck when he was coming out? I mean, that might where be. Where did a Kyle Uzcheck go to school? <laughs> I went to no Harvard. Idea. Where? I think he went to Harvard. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So he was a tight end at Harvard. Um, but so, the thing is, with Ben Mason, he catches the ball, but he's not an East-West runner at all. You got to get him going south. down. Yeah. yeah, he's going south, man. Yeah, so we you got know? we got my change of pace uh running back. Is that what we is that yeah. what we're saying? Well, but but it was a slower <laughs> pace though. I mean, we didn't look, we anticipate I, look, a slower pace. Uh, look, look. I just like it. I just like it as a saying. It's 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 a, a a change of pace for culture. You know, you're bringing in a you're bringing in one of those like Kyle Ritchie guys that has like the blood flowing down his face and you know, looks like the Road Warriors from mm-hmm. uh you know, the, uh, the NWA. Right. So I, I, I like this. I like this. And, and, and it didn't take long for me to, to see no just more. a little bit of what he was. And, and I, I can co-sign on this, especially at 226, you know, um, the only argument that could be made here is that maybe um, you are identifying undrafted free agents at this point and maybe getting a guy that you want to make sure is on your team at 226. So there, there's, a, there's a little bit to that. Um, sure. More so than just picking 
And, but I think this is that type of move as well. You know, you're yeah. saying, okay, I like this Ben Mason guy. He, he fits because Wesco is the guy that you're talking about for that position right now. Um, or maybe Tyler Croft, but um, he, he fits that mold. Um, the other direction I was looking at was maybe Puka Williams out of Kansas, who is a, a an all around weapon type, um, you know, that just did not get a chance to fully show his talents because of all the, the crap that goes on at Kansas uh, with less miles and then firing of coaches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Brandon, I could co-sign on that. You got two. All right. All right. Uh, we're not going to get three. At least I'm not going to be your third. Um, I was looking at the, you know, I was looking at the highlights as soon as you mentioned his name, because he, he came out of left field. I just saw him running for two yards. <laughs> so I lost it lost my the luster for me. Um so anyway, um who Ben, who ben Mason Yeah, or ben, ben Mason all day. All day. You know what I mean? It was like he fell forward for two yards. You know what I mean? That, that's all so these are the highlights, by the way. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but who was compiling the highlights? Uh, I don't know. It was probably somebody from Ohio State. <laughs> I, I, very I'm, rarely. I'm not drafting him to run the ball. Oh well, I I'm I'm drafting him to see what he he's done in the past. Like what can you do? Yeah. He just, you know. Four four for two yards. I'm just not excited. All right, so um, this is what I'm gonna do. Dax Maline, if if that's how you pronounce it, right? Milne, 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 Milne. No, Milne, Milne. Milne. But there's no I before the L. No, it's it's oh, Milne. No, I, there is no. Are you sure? Is this supposed to be? I, 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 I looked it up a couple times. Anyway, all right. I, so this guy. I have right? a friend with the same name. It's uh, Milne. Milne. Oh wow, yeah. that's totally left field. All right, so um. I'm gonna go with Dax. You know why? I want a comfort blanket. I want I want my number two pick to feel comfortable coming into the New York Jets. Right? This was this, this was um, his roommate. His roommate. Right? His roommate. It's his, it's his roommate from college. Is from he, college. Is he a receiver. Receiver. Absolutely. Mm. And a lot of these. Those, those number five. So you you watching the highlights? Right. A lot of those. Uh, that's throw, number five. Throw me open catches. Right. By him. Right. That's, that's number Spectacular five. Spectacular catches. By right. The way. Right. So so in I, traffic. So if I'm thinking of you know. Again, the back end of the sixth round, uh, you know, back end of your roster, but somebody that can challenge somebody as the sixth receiver on your, you know, on your board or or on your roster. Um, somebody that can make my number two pick, Zach Wilson, feel comfortable immediately in this New York market. And, oh, by the way, can play football because <laughs> not shabby as far as his – Pro football f- f- focus rank is ninety. That's his grade. It's ninety. What is measurables? Um, it's a great question. Uh, six one one ninety. So special teams could be right. Is a return? I don't know. I, I I don't know if he does any of that kind of stuff, or whatever else. But maybe you could throw him off coverage or something like that as well, and see if you can keep him uh, as a back end of the roster guy, and maybe he makes your fifty three. Who knows? Mm. But, you know, the first couple of years this guy is here, Zach Wilson is here, everything should be about him. When you think about the first five draft picks we made, it was about him, right? Mm. It was offensive line, running back, wide receiver, let's get this guy weapons, and why not at the end of the sixth round who somebody that performed excellent in 2020, again, against lower competition, so you got to keep that in mind, but overall a 90 score is excellent and again why not give him a security blanket um i think he's the guy why not Mm. so i have the last pick as well as the no who's who's the uh me i am you're the tiebreaker yeah hmm (laughs) <laughs> Does that change your pick? <laughs> <laughs> that might change my pick. I'm not that bad. Gee whiz. No, no. I'm going to go we're Ben Mason. Here, so I'm just trying to figure it oh, out. You are? Go oh, wow. I'm going to go okay. Ben Mason here. Um, and, and by the way, guys, I just sent you guys highlights of Ben Mason. And whatever two-yard run you saw, Brian, was probably for a first down. It's probably design. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all by design. I'm just saying. And he didn't trip forward. Yeah. He ran forward. Yeah, I just want to say. <laughs> um, but. If for the reasons that Coach Kyle and, and Brandon mentioned, um, if you can get somebody who might be 
in a mold of a of a use check um, that can fit your offense uh, and do the things that you want to do to be successful in your offense. Um, some of the inline blocking. Uh, he's a character guy, which definitely fits um, the uh, profile of what our general manager is trying to put together as far as a a culture um, in the locker room. Um, and as a running back fullback to be a team captain, um, I think that falls right in line. This guy's not a you know, significant impact player as far as you know getting drafted high, but is still um, a team captain on a team like Michigan. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Ben Mason here. Ooh, and they have him listed right. as a running back, fullback, and tight end, and he also played a little D-line when, when necessary. And I was watching some of his highlights, and you know who he reminds me of running the ball? He runs like Danny Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> he does, huh? He runs like Danny Hanson. And you know what else? I love his number that he's wearing, too. You know I'm a numbers guy. He wears number 42. That's a good fullback number. Makes him look more athletic. So, uh, yeah. You know, he runs like Danny Hanson. Love you, Danny Hanson. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, I like to pick on the tiebreaker. Brian, good argument on, on what you're saying, but I think, you know, without me even being the tiebreaker, it's three to one. It's got to go to Ben Mason. Okay. So we've got that. So, guys, he's also our the, draft. He's also the number younger. three fullback. Uh, on Walter please football. pull it up. He's the number three fullback on um, Walter football. Um, okay. Another, another, and and Stevenson, the the running back from Oklahoma was the number one. So, Remind, um, right? yeah, he's 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 long gone. Um, the only problem here, guys, is that Ben Mason is not listed in PFN. Oh, so can't. we are going to have to write in this pick. Are you sure? Are you sure? I think he is in PFN, Kyle. He's there. I'm searching him. Mason, unless he was picked, because I saw him up there. You have it as offensive guard, so put it all. Yeah, or just put it. uh, Yeah, there he is. There he is. There he is. And there is our draft. All right, run it, run it down, because the video um, may have seized. (laughs) So, um, so run it down. So, with our number two pick, Zach Wilson out of BYU. With pick number 23, Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive guard out of USC. The 34th pick, Kadarius Toney, wide receiver slash kick returner slash weapon out of Florida. Nice. 66th pick, Liam Eichenberg, offensive tackle on the right side out of Notre Dame. (laughs) 86th pick, running back, weapon, Kenneth Gainwell. Out of Memphis, 107th pick, we get our corner with Ambry Thomas out of Michigan. Our projects, starting with number 146, Charles Snowden, uh, an edge slash outside linebacker out of Virginia. Shakura Brown, a big corner out of Michigan State. Evan McPherson, a kicker out of Florida. And then with the final pick of the Jets draft, 226, Ben Mason, fullback, out of Michigan. So that gives us six offensive players, three D, and one special teams. That is correct. That is correct. And you know what? We need each and every one of them. That's how bad the Jets were this season. (laughs) So, fellas, this was a great draft, a great time executing this mock draft. and. Let's be honest. Here at Team BKBK, if the Jets follow this model that we just executed and project out there into the ether, the Jets will be a better team. Don't you guys agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. So, listen, everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the BKBK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. So keep watching. You can find us on Facebook on our BKBK Podcast fan page. You can find us on Twitter on at BKBK Podcast, on Instagram at BKBK Podcast, 
as well as on YouTube. When you go on YouTube, type in BK, BK Podcast. Guys and girls, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and just keep watching us, all right? And if you can't do any of that and you just want to just listen to us, um, you can find us on iTunes. Go to bkbkpodcast.podomatic.com. All right, that's it. Let's go Jets. Let's go Baldwin Bruins. All righty. Coach Carroll, we love you. And let's go Team BKBK. And we are out. Oh.